Wow, that was lackluster for our first time back in a month. Nobody knows that that was our first time back. They do know. We said it. We said that we were recording. Um, Girl, with them episodes be coming out consistently. They didn't know that. They didn't know that. <laughs> they, yes, they did. Because I kept saying in every episode, like, that's why we don't have pop culture or politics. Anyway. Yes, oh, no, it's too late. <laughs> your mouth do it it's the weirdest thing wait i can already see what you're doing you don't have us up in the in the corner i just did it uh child i can yeah. already tell you about to be trying to figure out which which tab to open lost how are you sheila you're looking brown i'm jealous you're tan like tan tan like you need new concealer come closer <laughs> I saw it when you logged on. I was like, baby girl needs to, she need her summer concealer. That shit too light. <laughs> I got some too. Where is that? Yo, Shanti, you look um red. Like you look like the India women that have the red ton- undertones. It looks so pretty. Thank you, girl. Are you happy? Oh, Do you like my tan? Sun. Yeah, your freckles come. <laughs> That's all I got for you. Some <sighs> Crackalack and Sheila, we're well. back. All this well. I don't have much to offer, but speaking oh. of brown people, I started watching Miss Marvel with the little brown teenage girl. She and they don't say directly what her Miss Marvel ethnicity. Yeah, it's on Disney Plus. And it's a little Muslim brown girl from a brown family. And it is It's a show or the mm-hmm. movie? No, it's a Disney Plus show. And it's a Miss- is it a part of the Marvel Universe? Mm-hmm. Really? I don't know who she's supposed to be. Miss Mar- Is there a Miss Marvel? Yes, girl. Yeah. She was so. in the movies in Endgame and she had she's, her own. But she's she's brown. So I don't know what I don't understand anything about it, but I'm invested. It's humans or cartoons? Humans. But it's this oh. Muslim girl who's like trying to navigate her parents' traditional ways with, you know, slutty American shit and lackluster lack of culture that America has, the lack of traditions, the tight leotards. This is your upbringing, (laughs) basically. And she is, it's so, it's, they did such a good job. Just like, I, I'm really excited about it. And brown people are just far more interesting to look at just the 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 context the everything i'm i'm into it jojo's also into it but i was hype watching that i also watched the first episode of stranger things Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, i don't mm -hmm. think she should have watched that entire season because i saw that one episode and i was like jojo's watching this it's it's off it's crazy it's a what you mean it's just like a violent crazy scary show oh it's scary this season yeah yeah this season is giving horror film and i was like i let jojo watch this oh when they were like (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah, that was like bulimic in the bathroom and shit i was like what is this this is jojo is 12 she need to yeah she's not 12 she is not yet 12 Oh, well, she's about to be 12, child. Come on. Either way, I said I'm a bad mom because I No, am, you're not. I am not Stranger in any way. Kids. Is it that? Well, yeah, do you know, sex in it. Do you know that Stranger Things is actually based on a true conspiracy? And what's it called? Of Among course talk- you know this. What YouTube video did your I'm ass I'm about to watch? get on YouTube. <laughs> It's based on uh, the Montauk monster or the Montauk um, uh, similar to what was in Stranger Things. They say it was like this compound of scientists doing weird shit and there's a Montauk monster. It's probably not real. Who knows? But listen. Well, this season... One, there's more episodes coming out. I finished this season. I binged it. I was in it. I was into it. The best episode... The It doesn't matter. 
Don't tell me it because I'm gonna start going. That's I'm, why I stop. That's why I stop. But I'm I'm into it. I'm 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 getting into it and I'm questioning my parenting uh, decisions. But also on a more emotional note, I'm yeah. questioning everything, all mm. my decisions, <laughs> and I'm not trusting myself anymore. I'm like consciously not fucking with myself, and oh. it's been the most awful and wonderful thing in one and i guess we'll expound on that later but it's been a wild season it's i feel like everybody that i know everybody that i know is like in a thing like they're in a thing and i I don't want to say they're like in a transition period but like something is breaking in everybody that i know and there's no turning back people are being reflective definitely reflective or just like breaking like they have no choice like it's not that they're reflective and they're like oh i'm gonna do this thing differently it's like oh my god i have no other choice but to do this thing and it's the most awful thing i'm experiencing in my life but i cannot do anything else so i don't know something's in the water uplifting an uplifting episode for our return ready to come How are you, girl, Do you have some was, cheer on your I, end? I just had a conversation with a friend of mine, and I was like, he says some shit where he said, you know, I just feel like oftentimes we're managing misery. And I was like, oh, no. I know. As soon as he said it. Well, life is suffering. Everything in me just shuddered. But no, I don't have anything good to say. I um, <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Mm-hmm. We we are doing the best we can. We mm-hmm. came off a, a week of of internal strife, mm-hmm. <laughs> business strife, where we we're figuring things out and doing hard things together, and we're going to continue to do them together. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, last week was not a good week for for me for us, and then we worked it out. But you know, I I am hoping on a different note, and I won't harp on this. But I'm really hoping people are watching the coverage of the hearings that have to do with the insurrection. I saw how many people were commenting on the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. This is much more important, in my opinion. <laughs> but um, I I think it's really telling. One, the hearings aren't that interest. They're very interesting to me, but... I, I can understand why the general public is like, all right, well, what happens? This isn't a trial. It's a hearing to try to figure out if charges are going to be brought up. And yada, 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 yada. I think the big takeaway from this for me is that Fox News, like this, this aired on primetime television, like every channel was playing this. And except for Fox News, <laughs> Fox News, which is the the highest rated cable network, which is crazy to me. They refused to air it. Instead, they had competitive, uh, a competitive airing with Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram that had no commercials, which means that Rupert Murdoch, the owner of Fox, was so invested in like covering up these hearings and basically the truth that he was willing to lose millions upon millions of dollars of advertising dollars in order to make sure his audience was engaged and not engaged in the hearings. People, (laughs) this shit is wild. Like that that is, it's the news. (laughs) It's the news conspiring to withhold truth, which is just, and and it's also very interesting how everyone's turning on Trump because they, you know, you're under oath. And even his own daughter is like, Ivanka's a bitch. I said it. She literally went on there and said that she accepted the truth, that that, that the big lie was a lie. Trump lost the election. But she she testified months ago. And right after she testified, she went on a fucking tour with her daddy spreading the big lie, getting more dollars from his... She is just... They're just tricky, tricky. But didn't, they, didn't, he, the devil. didn't he say something about her? Like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's been tapped out since blah, blah, yeah, blah, Yeah, he blah. said that after he saw what she said, which he is just like, wild. like, I want to spank her. 
I'm he so, wants to do man. more than that to his I know, daughter's sick ass <laughs> man. Is weirdo. But I also think it was interesting. One, I'm not a fan of Liz Cheney's politics, but I appreciate her um, her approach here. She's getting <laughs> she she votes with Trump ninety percent of the time, but she is still, you know, up there and still representing, you know, what the truth is, and she's. Her, I think her goal in this is to make sure that Trump never holds office again. Mm-hmm. She does not want to see the Republican Party turn into the Trump Party, which it is right now. Um, so I respect that. I, I, again, I don't align with her politics or her family. But I'm hoping that people are engaged in watching it. And I'll leave it there. I don't want to get on my soapbox. In other news, child... <laughs> I have been trying to be outside and failing. When I say shut What do you mean be outside? I've been trying to be open and like Your to receive. Open. Penis. <laughs> well, that hopefully, <laughs> but to receive like, you know, a, to date. No. Yeah. I think I'm coming. I'm coming back in. I think I'm over Dude, it. It's air conditioning inside here, girl. Girl. It is tricky out there. So one, um, I have to, this is a public service announcement. Most women, especially women who have been single and who have not been sexually active like me all year and a little over that, we are rooting for y'all. It's the same way when an actor walks into a casting room and the casting director, their hope, like you think that you're up, like it, that it's this, hurdle this obstacle you have to get past but really that casting director is hoping and praying and wishing that you are exactly what they're looking for because they want the right actor they want the right person baby i'm rooting for y'all and the way men talk themselves out of the person is wild to me i'm just like i was rooting for you and then you just had no sense what happened? What are they doing? What are they doing? So the guy that I bagged with Mandy and them, he just, oh. he did not have to, girl, he went away for two weekends in a row, oh which is God. fine. You're outside too. We know this. It's cool. Like, stop. And then he texted me one, as soon as one, when he went away to Atlanta, talking about it was for something for family. Maybe it was, but okay. And then I just didn't hear from him for like five days fine whatever like you're doing whatever you're doing your thing then i get this text from him shanti and he's like yo craziest thing happened somebody stole my phone oh, and i Lord. was like i read that and just thought why you didn't need to say it you could have been like hey i'm back can we get together cool like you didn't need to do that why did you do that and then i said somebody stole your phone i'm so sorry to hear that i said they stole your phone and and you went out and bought another android that was what that was my response I was like you got your phone stolen and went and got another droid the f- terrible decision making green bubbles again and then he was like then he he followed it up with ha 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 you're so funny literally just got my contact Back, contacts back three minutes ago and who did I text right away? Oh no! Shanti! Oh God! You're I'm like, oh, like, I just broke my phone by cracking it in half. <laughs> I just thought, damn, you were this close, bro. All you had to do was have some sense. And I even said to you, like, he's not my husband. He's not the person that I've been. But we could have possibly enjoyed each other's company, maybe. And he fucked it up. It's like all you have to do is have is be sensible. Don't be immature and have some respect and some discernment. Like what's wrong? Discernment, I, some grace. Be, some grace. Get some grace into this. These people. Yes. So that was the one. Then, child, I told you there was a Trini man. <laughs> Trini man, that was he the first. In my girl, that was the first. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Cause shout out to Jay and her Trini husband. Okay, Insane. Jade of all Jades and Tristan. Shout out to them. But baby, he fixes my tire. If it's one thing I'm gonna do, it's going. I'm gonna get a nail in my tire. That's my favorite thing to do somehow. So I have to take this damn car to him all the time. Like, hi, I have a slow leak again. <laughs> He's like. 
talking to me and he and he remembers me and he's always very like you know kind of flirty but not too much where i'm uncomfortable and it feels Mm -hmm. gross Mm -hmm. um and he like brought me in the back of the shop and was showing me how he fixes the tire and put me on the game and all this stuff it was cool so he's like you know he always like he's like you need a dread in your life you need a dread in your life you need somebody looking out for you i'm like you know what skinny skinny. and i thought of you You was Get doing dread. field research. Yes. The, you know what we say. It's them skinny dreadlock Negroes. Mm-hmm. They come through. Look at Erica Badu. They come through packing. They come through. Put Girl, emaciated chest. <laughs> okay. Hips smaller than, I mean, narrow hips. I, I was like, good God, you need to eat. <laughs> Girl, he asked me for my number and I was like, you know what? Why not? Sure. One, one, I was embarrassed because my white side was really showing because I'm, I had to ask him to repeat himself maybe like a hundred times while he was figuring what you out. say, like, what did what you, you say? say? What did you say? Huh? Huh? Because his accent is so heavy and it's cute, but I'm, I just feel super white. And out of place. And I'm like, yo, I, I'm from, I used to be a bed I'm in Flatbush now. It's super Caribbean or Caribbean. I don't even know, fucking know how to say it right. Like, which one is it? I'm confused. So I just, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Girl, we went out the same night. He asked me to like, chill. I was like, okay, cool. When I tell you this man had nothing to say. And I, maybe it was because he didn't think I was going to understand him. I don't know. But the, Nothing. And then I kept saying nothing like, to say. So it was he just was like mute, mute, mute. So wait, mute. wait, wait. So y'all y'all where did y'all go? So we, we were to supposed to go to a bar, but it was super like hectic in there and I could tell that I could tell immediately from his body language that like crowds aren't his things. So I was like, We don't have to go in there. We could go for a walk. Um I was like, honestly, let's go to Prospect Park. Let's walk around. It was the evening and it was late. But I was like, you know, the park, we still have like an hour and a half before the park closes. He's like, okay, cool. He Y'all drives walking, over there. Kicking rocks. No, he drives over there. We get out and he just, he's asking me, he's asking me questions, but no follow-up. How many siblings do you have? I'm like, oh, I have this many siblings. She lives here. But Okay. And I'm like, okay, well, and I, <laughs> I'm asking him about Trinidad. You don't know what he said? He said, whoa, it's hot. <laughs> I said, oh, is there anything else? I mean, it's a lot of crime. Um, you know, the the ocean is close. I mean, nothing, Shanti. Nothing. And I said, this poor sweet man. He was so sweet. I and could- then he... He, we sat down on the park bench and I was struggling. Like I, I just kept thinking like, I got to get out of here. He's so sweet. And I fucked up my tire thing. Like now every time I got to get my tire fixed, it's going to oh, be awkward. No. It's going to be awkward now. Like, why did you do that? So I'm thinking uh. about all this stuff. And then, you know, Caribbeans, they always got a baby shower. So somebody hit him up and was like, oh, yeah. come through to such and such as baby shower. And he was like, oh, you want to go? And I'm like, no, nah, I don't, I'm not going to go to your family's baby. Shower. Like, no, no. So he's like smoking too, and I'm just, and it it was just like a dub. So he dropped. So then we're walk out. He's like, oh, we can get out of here. Cool. We're walking back to the car. He puts his arm around me. I'm like, what are you doing? Like that's they not go, what. This wasn't the vibe. This wasn't. What did the you? Vibe. So y'all just you let him put his arm around you though. Just I so let him because I, I mean, he's not mean and he wasn't gross or right, weird. Right. Right. But it he was just, just like. Oh. pulling teeth trying to get him to talk and you can tell that um he just is a very simple man a very simple He's probably like, good man but just, just doesn't have anything fuck. to say girl then <sighs> then he drops me off and he goes oh well i have to go you know check my people out or whatever but i can come back and keep you company i was like what it was like 12 o'clock. I had left my house at 11. I got back by 12. Like, it was quick. The universe I, is giving you something now. I said, it, sir, I don't. Skinny man with locks, girl. No, I said, sir, <laughs> I at least need to be able to talk to you. And that's that's the other thing is that I I have, there's still standards here. Like, I'm not one of these people that can just, right. so I'm struggling. But I will say, um, 
I ran into an ex at the Roots picnic and was nice to him. And Jasmine and Amanda were so mad that I met up with them the day later that I was being nice to him. And they were like, no, get on Hinge. So they did a Hinge profile for me. I was on Hinge for a week. I'm done. Why? <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I don't like it. One, I don't like it. I don't think it's right. What I don't do you think, it's, I right. think it's right? It's What's just, wrong with it? I think it's dehumanizing. I just the swipe. You're swiping. There's so many people. And then you just, you have to log on to the app and respond to people. They're all asking the same dumbass questions. It's just, no. What are it's they asking? It's just simpleton questions. It's like, oh, hi, how are you? Oh, fine. How are you? Like, at least ask something about what was on my profile. Oh, where was that picture? That looks cool or something. Are you, are you actually I am. going I am. on to... Okay. Let me tell you something. I was right. I was liking stuff, but the thing about it was I didn't. I made it a point not to like almost any pictures. I would only like because you have to write something on Hinge, and so I would like always like what they said. But and aside from liking, that. okay, but you are and comment. I would always comment like, "Oh, I love this. This is a great list of green flags," or you know something where I'm. And then they would just be like, "Oh, hi, how are you?" Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, like oh lol yeah what's up or uh, or oh uh what, you know what are you a lot of what are yous what are I got you a lot of yeah like what are you basically what is my ethnic makeup even though it fucking says it on my profile they will say um, what are you yeah oh yeah um oh, God. why don't you have any kids yet <gasps> There's a picture Jasmine told me to put the picture up of me in the Balinese bathtub with the flowers around me. Yeah. And they were like, why, why do I want to, somebody wrote, why, why am I in the mood for soup? And I was like, yo, kill me. Like actually kill me. <laughs> it's bad. And then you were on the phone with me yesterday when the dude at the grocery store tried to bag me and he was nuts. He was the guy well, who thing I posted. You shouldn't have given him your number. Well, I'm I'm trying to be open. You know, I was like, fuck it. All right. He had a face tat, though. Why didn't I know? <laughs> what is face wrong tats, with Face me? tats are not all bad. Face I, tats I, I are bad. I don't know bad. if that's... Face tats for me, I'm good. I'm good, love, and joy. He said, let me tell you with it. He said, this is blank, enter name here. Nice to meet you. You busy? This, you busy came 10 minutes. I had left... 641 was when he texted me when I left the grocery store and said, nice to meet you. He texted me, are you busy at 705? Mm. Then he right. texts, can I call you at 710? Whoa. Bro, we just like, okay, it's great to be, listen, we'll okay. I, if you know what you want, great. But obviously I'm busy. I'm driving the fuck home. I got to, you saw me. I got a whole thing full of groceries. I didn't respond because my Trader Joe's bags burst and I was trying to figure out how to get these groceries home. And then he goes, you should be nice and send me a pic. That man was 40 something years old. Okay. By the looks of him, he was 40 something years old asking me for a pic, not two hours after meeting me. I did not respond to one of your texts yet. And we have never had a phone conversation. And you are asking me for a pick. No. Die. Go go away, sir. Then I didn't respond to that. And then today at 9 o'clock in the morning, he hits me and says, that wasn't nice. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I'm I not lying. The, <laughs> I didn't keep the, um, the, the grammar. <laughs> that wasn't nice. Ma'am, I just feel so, like, and I have to be honest, I was so turned off that I tried to have some self-care yesterday and I cried because I couldn't do it. I Nothing would work. I couldn't think of any scenario. And I was like, wow, this is sad. You're at the point where you have so much despair when it comes to these men. Disappointment. That you can't even your vibrator won't even get you where you need to be. Like nothing was working, and I I did shed a tear, and I rolled over, and Blue was staring at me, and I was like, "Fuck my life!" And I just was like, "Who was like you?" 
He was like, oh. girl, why are you doing that with me in here? That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so those are my updates. I'm still out here trying. Well, this the, the tone done. for. But you know what? I think it's good that people listen to the real because y'all really got us fucked up if you think we're not over here suffering and depressed like all Everybody of else. We out here struggle but even after the roots picnic which was really lovely thank you to everybody who came we have a mm-hmm. patreon video in which we did a uh a, a recap. recap but for patreon all, exclusive we really appreciate y'all coming for the folks that didn't make it um but still sending love from afar for people who came on sunday to the sable collective we are just and for those of you who are just joining us, the Roots Picnic was a music festival in Philadelphia thrown by the one and only Roots crew. And um, Shanti and I performed on the podcast stage live show. So shout out to shout out to Philly. Shout out to us. Shout out to growth. And shout out to you all. Please, this is a great opportunity for me to ask you to please rate, subscribe, and share around the way, girls. Uh, we have so many new listeners. I, I do monitor the stats like an insane person. And with all these new listeners, it would be great to get some new reviews. You can now review on Spotify. You can review on Apple. You can rate on both. And please share, call, do your thing. Um, but anyway, for hot shit, you know, I'm an old lady. I was watching The View, and I'm super hype. LeVar. Girl, first of all, The View is in their 25th year, and they are still going. Okay, don't oh, do it was me. The, uh, it's the multicultural thing that fell apart. It was the, with the blacks and it, the It was the, the one that, that tried to, they tried to copy The View. With, and with colored people. First of all, there are people of said, color on The View. What, is, one, what are you ta- Whoopi Goldberg is one, on the view. Sunny Hoskins is on the view. How one many do two. you want? That's fine. I'm, it's working, nigga. It's a <laughs> ship over there. You try to get too many Y'all, of them together. You, you hate it. Amanda Seals apparently was all upset that she didn't get a shout out for the end of that. Well, Amanda called? Seals also was on there for six months and then told, talked about how terrible of a place it was to work. So why would they invite you back? And she Girl, also brought up a point where she, she brought up a point that, you know, whether you have grievances towards your old boss or not, you still, you know, um, she, there was an offering that she made for the show. There was, there were, there was a demographic she brought in. She served a purpose, but I can understand them being like, you don't fuck with us. You didn't you enjoy your time shooting here. in a gym. Like you, you publicly shit on us so why would why would the producers i don't know i see both sides of it but i wouldn't i wouldn't invite somebody back on my farewell show who shat on the show like no go to and it doesn't mean that what she's saying isn't valid that's not what i'm saying i'm sure what she's saying is valid but i'm just if they I didn't did, even listen to what she said, girl, to be completely honest. Me no, me ne- I really don't know what her grievance is. We don't know were, what she said, but, but what we knew she All was I'm upset. saying is it's not invalid if, you know, whatever. But anyway, on The View, LeVar Burton was on there. If you don't know who Aww. that is, I feel sorry for you. That's the dude, Black Boy from Reading Rainbow, Kuta Kente. <clears throat> he was on there, and I'm so excited. There is going to be a new documentary called, um, oh, shit. Butterfly, <laughs> butterflies in the sky. Butterfly in the sky. sky. <laughs> and Whoopi Goldberg is actually executive producing it. And apparently it's making its round at all the festivals. It's doing very well. So hopefully it'll be either in theaters or the streaming service. But it really touched my heart because, you know, I have a slight case of dyslexia. And Whoopi Goldberg is full on dyslexic. And so she talks often about how the way she consumes her books is through audiobooks. And so reading Rainbow was really important to her, even though she was in a girl. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Shanti is embarrassing me right now on Patreon. <laughs> girl. She, I'm gonna buy this ring light right after this. Her oh, whole boy. set is falling apart. Oh, child. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> 
she she was saying that even though she was an adult, having someone read to her, that's the way that she actually learned. And the doors that that opened for her, you know, the the kind of way in which her imagination was, you know, I can't even concentrate. Would you Activated. 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 Come you know, on, nigga. We out here. Come on. The Beyonce I, wins. I, I, Let's I, go. I, Gotta be Beyonce sometimes. All right. Come on. We okay. We got it. We good. Let's go. She's cleaning her screen. <laughs> she just fell apart over there, y'all. <laughs> but, um, yes, I'm excited for that. And I love LeVar Burton. And I did not know that he almost became a Catholic priest before what? reading Rainbow. Yes. That's what? a good natured man. Well, we Catholic priests. Tricky. <laughs> <laughs> tricky. We don't know. So there's it's that. Good internet. What? I'm not saying anything that's inappropriate or wrong. I'm said we speak truth here. Well, you you can speak from you were raised. I am Catholic I was Catholic. raised Catholic, so I can say it. Shit. In other news, pop culture. All right. <laughs> Puff Daddy Diddy Love was recently on, apparently, I don't know these people. Young Miami, and I don't want to say nothing bad because the city girls apparently are very nice to jazz. So, <laughs> we'll preface with that. But Diddy was on Carisha, who I, I believe is Young Miami, one of them, on her podcast. And it's not really a podcast because the audio isn't available anywhere. It's like a t- TV show that she just does an interview on Revolt. He's dating her, right? Since or, when? So they've been doing, I don't know, but all I know is they were at some award show. He was there with another woman, but he's also dating her. And the woman like posted all these pictures of them and was basically the one some like, that's not your man, it's my man. And then they were going back and forth. And young Miami was like, listen, you need to chill and learn, know your place. Because either way, that could be a nigga and I'm still going to be on him. He's still going to be on me. So you just need to fall back and recognize, like, whatever. Like, you... And she basically told Diddy, like, get your chick together because I'm not going anywhere. Which is absolutely insane to me. I'm just like, that's crazy. But also, I guess she was being very honest. That's not the point of this. The point of this is that Diddy went on this show... One, I, I really had a hard time listening to it. Everybody was asking me my opinion. I'm like, listen, I can't listen to this girl talk. Her voice, I don't know if you've ever heard it, but it's difficult to lock in for 30 minutes. Of So what you, what is we? So what is it? So like, you like to, you like to make love a fuck. Like, it, it was just that. And God bless her. I'm sure she's a very sweet person. It just wasn't for me. But what I want to say is I am concerned about men like Puffy (laughs) who play in our faces under the guise of love and freedom and wanting to just see people win and support them. And it's like, bro, you are playing in all of these women's faces and I need you to stop. But don't you think that he's telling, like we playing basketball. He's playing, but he's like, this is the game. We're playing basketball. You on my team or not. But the game that we're playing is basketball. You you (laughs) fucking on, if you on my team, we're playing a game. I hear that. Is you in or is you not? I hear that, but I... I think that he's doing it. He it's also a little bit of a mind fuck because I, it's giving a little like, it's not hotep, because but it is a little bit. He's talking about like the scriptures he sends her and shit. I'm like, did he cut it the fuck out? And how she asked him like, so what is we? He was like, you know, we we friends, we date, we explore the world. He said, we, we, this, we, we, we go to casinos. We, we go, go to strip clubs. clubs. We go to church. <laughs> we go to church. She was like, oh, you want to take me to church? I like that. I was just like, oh, man. Nah, but she, also, if she asked him for twins. She was like, I know that you like want more kids, and I want more kids, and I know twins want to get family, and I'm like, I want no, twins. No, I ain't so. mad at Diddy at all. I am, I'm not mad at him. I think he's 
But I don't think he's being all the way honest. I think that he knows that these women want something more from him. Um, some of them, not maybe not all of them. And I know that he's just like, I'm gonna. He, I think he's being honest, but in a very misleading way, in a way where he's just. I think he believes his rap. I think he. I think that he believes his rap. I think he thinks do love you, is love. Do I you do, think, I think that Diddy would 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 be interested in his daughters? He has three of them dating someone like him. Possibly, I think he'd probably be like, "Do you, you figure it out?" He don't care what his sons do. He don't care what his sons do. I think he's evolved enough to, and. Again, he lives Child. a lifestyle. He did. He has had experiences. Life, ex- the range that this man has experienced, that I think he has found what works for him. And he's. I think he's Girl, true to I his don't, philosophy. I, think, I don't because I think he was sick when Kim Porter passed away. Of course, but I that's think a part he was of the range. Sick. That's part of the range in which he exists. Now, if he is in denial, if he's escaping things, if he's maybe you know maybe you're um, right. Yeah, of course. I don't think he's beyond that, but I think he. I think that he is. There's a level of honesty, and he's I, like, "Yo, I play." But it's a I manipulative honesty. It's you gonna a, be it's on my still team? manipulative because no, it's not. Up, he's Miami. not. He's not grow coming up. at them like, "Are you gonna be on my team?" It's like. Diddy's the type where he makes, while he's with you, he makes you think, like you could tell, he makes you think you're the you only like you're person the in the world. And I think he's probably present in that moment too. He's like, it's you and me. I love you. I got love for you, but I also have love for this girl. So and this I'll one, see and you this later. One, and, this and, one. I, and, and this one, and I'm going to take pictures. I ain't got nothing to hide. I got so much love to give. So you maybe that's me? it. Maybe he's actually freer than all of us. Because I'm going to fuck with you. You will fuck with me. We will be good. But then I'm going over to your friend. And I might fuck your mom. It's reckless. <laughs> it's wild. It's hurtful. He's broken a lot of hearts. He's broken heart. You know that he's broken hearts. My God. Apparently, anyway, you know what? You know, I just the want Asian women girl is to be who ready. He cheated on with Cassie. Excuse me? The, the Asian girl that's Miami. I don't know the girl's name. I just know she's Asian. Or Asian adjacent she <laughs> <laughs> she that miami's in conflict with uh-huh, uh-huh. is has been in his life for years oh yeah she said that she and been around cassie is who he was playing around with cassie got off with. that merry-go-round she's Car- like, cassie said, dating you know a what? white man they think having, they're married well she and had this, two of his white babies these, these white men are for me. Cause and this... he's like a rodeo person. He's like a rodeo trainer. I'm here for it. Really? That yeah, a he's white... a rodeo got... king. Ooh. He rides rodeo, rodeo things. King. Anyway, well... you know what it is? If that's what you want to do, cool. But I just want women to like be really ready for it. Like It's a certain kind of woman that can endure and enjoy Diddy. That kind of man. And I think that there's a lot of men that are trying to be Diddy, but they not Diddy. <laughs> they don't have the range. They don't have the range. Diddy I don't know if Diddy range. has I think the range. Diddy, I think Diddy, and the rumor is that Diddy it has has tasted the rainbow, has oh. been with men. Diddy's just lived up, like, to be a rich black man in the 99, in the 2000s, he wasn't Could you just imagine? any rich black. No, it was different. He wasn't any rich black man. He was the a range God. that he the sh- and he saw light, death. He saw all types of shit like organized life, organized death. Tricky. Chow. Chow. This nigga well, I, I he's got a lot of life to And, and he's, he's also lived. into um tantric sex. You would have been happy. He was like, my favorite position is missionary. I like to look in people's eyes. Look Diddy, at how happy you are. I'll, like, I'll fuck around and be like, Diddy, let's... Because w- 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 you're right. He would... He's also probably super intense. He's a Scorpio. So he's probably intense as fuck. And he's rich. And he's smart. And he has access. He's fucking these women's heads up. They're like, oh, but you're basically saying what I said. Like, I'm worried for y'all. I'm worried. That's a, that's a lot of 
energy. That's a lot of that's a powerful man right there. He's got a power in all the ways. And but he he de- but you know what? There's a lot of powerful men, but they don't always use their powers for good. And I don't think that the money is what makes him powerful. I think it's the it makes him interesting the confidence. Yeah, I think him. it makes him interesting. I think it makes this like, yeah, we going here. Oh, I know. But person. he's the type where like she would ask him questions, and if he didn't want to answer, he provided the most non-answer answer, and it was one of those things where you were just like, you didn't Scorpio. even catch it in the moment. He's a Scorpio. It was just like, oh, okay, he answered, and then you think back like he didn't say shit. He didn't just say. Then. He didn't tell me anything. <laughs> Tricky. Tricky. Moving on. <laughs> You got something here about J Hud? You trying to congratulate Jenna, her? Yes. What do you call it? He got. Mm-hmm. She has won an Emmy, an Oscar, a Grammy, and what's the other one? A Tony. And a it's Tony. a theater. Shout out to her. I don't think I think we forgot about Jennifer. Is she still married from that man from? Uh... No, girl. They broke up. Don't do that. Well, go for don't her. Bring it up. I just, I want to congratulate her and bring attention to her career that is just thriving. She's just doing her thug fizzle, making money, making the art. Mm -hmm. Shout out to her. Some respect on her name. That's super dope. She's a second black woman. And the first was who? Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi was. The God. Yeah, Whoopi is the God. She does this. She's been around. Whoopi, we need to do a whole damn podcast on Whoopi. Whoopi is tricky. But Whoopi, baby, she has broken all kinds of glass ceilings her entire career. First first black woman to host the Oscars. I think the first black woman to win Best Supporting Actress for an Oscar. I think the first black woman to win um, a Grammy for Best Comedy Album. Like, she's just done it all. She's won a Grammy? She's an yeah. EGOT. We just said what the fuck EGOT was. I know, was. but I did, it just connected to you. <laughs> she won. She's won a Grammy? I'm not yes. A Shout out to her. Um, this isn't really important, but I just saw it. It irritated me. People are mad at Lizzo for using the word spaz in a song. Don't let us get big. Internet, don't let us get big. If we ever, we're canceled. We're canceled. I know exactly what they're coming for me on, and I would like to apologize again. First of all, happy belated birthday to Sir and Rumi, those beautiful children. No. <laughs> because I was not really trying to comfort them. All I was trying to say was that twins are tricky. The way every kid is tricky. But there's always this awkward phase that twins go through. That's all no. I was trying to say. They said, you were tearing down black families. Like, You're canceled. You're a terrible you, person. I said, oh, God. I'm sorry. You had a moment at the Roots picnic that I was like, oh, God, we're going to get canceled. Were you when? Like, What'd I say? How many... Do we have any ambiguously raced people here? And, and the whole crowd was, and everybody was just like hands down. And I was like, oh, well, God. Well, I don't care. Do we? Just like, do we have any mixed people we're, here? Because we're ambiguously raced. We can talk to y'all. Everybody was just staring around looking at each no, other. No, they were. Like, oh, That's God. not even true. Because you couldn't even hear anybody at the Roots picnic. But, the, but I was saying that because we were about to get into the white moms thing. And it's tricky having white moms. Listen, I know I'm gonna get certain canceled people for, cannot, for for. That's for what I'm. If she can't say spaz, just imagine. I'm scared. We got video of this shit. Patreon got to come down. I'm just gonna delete our whole archive. Like everything's deleted. Like lose the RSS feed. It's gone. Don't cancel culture. But also spaz. But also she she was like I'm gonna make a whole new. I wonder what so, what word. Yeah, she, she rewrote. Used. I don't listen to Lizzo's music, so. I don't know. She's rewriting it. She's handling it well. She, I mean, but I, I was just, I didn't know. Then that's the thing. Like everything is offensive to someone and I'm not saying it shouldn't be. I'm not saying it should be. I'm still figuring that out. I don't know if it's my place to determine what should be offensive. I know that it's starting to feel like a lot. (laughs) Like I had a friend tell me that, um, handicapped people should like to be called handy capable. And I was like, no, they don't. But he was so serious about it. And I think it was because he, he was nervous that he thought that the language had changed into something else. Someone had told him that. So he was, he was, he had his anxiety about it. Like, no, you got to call him handy capable. I was like, I don't think that's a real thing. So I think <laughs> we're all scrambling to try to figure out, you know, what is appropriate language and figuring out who determines it. 
Fine I can't with no call spasm. women hoes and bitches. It's the end for That's me. That's okay. We have to continue this. That's just a if generalization. If you won't cancel me for calling a woman a hoe or a bitch. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's like, all right. <laughs> now you're drawing the line a little. You're drawing the line. Too many now. lines. All right. Too many lines. Speaking of hoes and bitches, Lori Harvey. <laughs> Lori, I am not mad at this little girl. I'm I don't sure understand. How old is Lori Harvey? Can you look it up? 24. That child is a child. That's a well, baby. Can you it, I don't know if she's that old. I'm going to check again. But oh, I what, thought you what is she, it. why is everybody glorifying her? I don't get everybody, it. Well, every, first people were mad because apparently her and Michael B. Jordan broke up, right? 25. 25. She's a child. That is a baby. And how old is he? 30 what? 6, 35, 34? I don't know. I don't fuck with him at Can all. You look him, I'm so look happy him, she's Look his free. little chipmunk self up. I do not fuck with him. His energy is wrong. And she knew it. I think that he, he, his energy was getting better with her. Mm-mm. The fact that you are typing this in with that one finger is annoying me. I like his middle name. Michael Bakari Jordan. How old is he? 35. Okay. That was your first Ten problem, year sir. age dish difference. Sir. So apparently what, what the reports are, who knows if this is right. All they know is she deleted all their pictures up for her social media. According, I mean, I think he still has hers up, whatever. But he was at the basketball game looking. You could tell he had been crying. He looked sad. He looked like he was struggling a bit. And people were like, oh, she's just a man eater. She just goes through these people. And then who are the people that she's gone through? I don't know enough about her. I know she was oh, dating Diddy. They said she was dating Diddy. I don't think Diddy, she was. She was. She was dating, also Diddy. dating his son. So I don't think that was real. Girl, love is love. And love no. has no boundaries. <laughs> we don't know. The, the people that we <laughs> know she dated Future. And Future hurt her feelings. And then he got her she back. And then she future. went and hurt his feelings. Yeah, she had future wrapped around her little finger. And then there was some there was some um soccer player that does really well for himself. I don't remember I don't follow um international football that much. That she was actually like engaged to or something. There's been plenty of people. But Michael B. Jordan, I know for us, like we could care less. Like we root like good job black man, but we're not like we don't think he's the sexiest man in the world. You know, people are really like, How could you break up with Michael B. Jordan? And why can't she? And the rumors are that that he wanted to settle down and that she was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I am 25. I have my whole life ahead of me. I'm no. 16. Don't we? Yeah. And so, and so I was listening to the arguments from some folks. And one of my male friends, he had an interesting perspective. He was like, she's, she's, first round draft pick as well like michael b jordan is first round draft pick for women like women would are super hype you know about him they think that he's the end all be all he was like but men men are lined up for Lori as well and she knows this so she's not pressed over him in the same he was just she's had access she's had money this that lifestyle is not new to her she's like this is like this is nothing so that's one perspective but then i saw women who were really like even Sonny Hostin said it on The View where she was saying, how do you break up with the sexiest man in the world? It's like, because you don't want to be with him. <laughs> and so it made me think to myself, is Lori like actually teaching us how to date? That she's just, she's dating. She's seeing what's out there. She's seeing what works. She's seeing, seeing what doesn't. And I don't know if she's not doing it with intention. I feel like she is, but I feel like if you're not ready for certain things, if indeed, like we don't have to, it doesn't have to be about those two, but if you're not ready for certain things, it's okay to step back and say, Hey, I I think you're incredible, but this timing is off for me. I'm not aligned with like your timeline, but so many women were saying like, she should have slowed down. What is she's going to regret this? She's going to this, she's going to that. I'm like, really? 25 yeah first of all i mean the fact that she erased all of his pictures on that Instagram makes me think he was cheating. makes me first of all none of us know what the fuck happened right like and the fact that we're reducing this to how attractive somebody is right. in the pop culture viewpoint is dumb and stupid but 
who knows what was going on in their relationship. And I I do hope that she made the best choice for her. And yeah, that she didn't hold on to him thinking like, oh, he's this, you know, top I'll never notch. find another I'll never person. find anybody else. Mm-hmm. Like But yeah, that 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 red rick red rick is stupid. That's stupid. How well, do you that... break up with some like Michael B. Jordan? Because you do because it was an unhealthy, toxic stifling relationship well we don't know if it was that either i'm just for example yeah but like but does it make how you, do wish you cheat it? on beyonce this sh- like th- hey nigga people out here being human relationships aren't based on what we think you know these gargantuan personas that we give but it made people. me think about how many times and like younger me would find someone and try to cling on to them mm. with dear life. Mm. So it made me so proud of her that you do have the quote unquote sexiest man in the world and you're still holding on to yourself first and Shut foremost. To, no, I know that's right. You, you see what I'm saying? Like that's that's what I got. To from keep it. it moving, do your exercise <laughs> 17 times a day. Keep it up. Oh, you're a hater. <laughs> that was some hater shit you just said. Also, shout out to her because Kim Kardashian is copying her skincare line and black Twitter lost their fucking minds. Anyway, but I don't know. I'm, I'm proud of her. Kim don't give a fuck. Those people don't care. Kim added an extra K in skin, even though Lori's line, I think, is called skin. But Kim but is Kim's S-K-K-I-N. But line Skims? Wasn't her original? Skims is clothing. But still, Skims? Skins? Like, she's got no, something wasn't going on here. Skin, no, Lori Harvey's skincare line is like skin, I believe. And then, uh, what are you uh, talking about? To me, it makes sense that Kim's, her clothing line, her shit she came out, out for late. a very long time, for a long time she's had, and very yes. successful, is Skims. And now she's doing a skincare line and naming it Skins. Kim Kardashian's minding her fucking business. Kim? <laughs> Black people are like, oh, Kim? you're still in the They lost like, their minds. They was like, I She's know like, she didn't do that to Lori. <laughs> I know they, I know she did. She's like, who the fuck is Lori? Well, oh boy. Either way, shout out to those entrepreneurial queens that eat two grapes a day. Um, I was out with Jade of all Jades, <laughs> and this came up. I don't know how it came up, but it was an unpopular opinion. And in the moment when I said it, and I saw her face. And the horror that came over her face. And she immediately told me not to repeat it. And I said, oh, I got to say this on the podcast then. Oh, no. And then she proceeded to call Crystal. And Crystal was like, your white side is showing, sister. (laughs) And we were going back and forth. And then Fran got involved. And she was like, how many drinks have you had? And I was (laughs) like, I'm completely sober. So I'm going to say this hot take. I want to free black people. Again, I think this is what we set out to do on this podcast is free ourselves. And the freedom that I want us to feel today is is the freedom from feeling obligated to like the fucking whiz. The whiz was mid at best. I said it. And in comparison to the the masterpiece that was the Wizard of Oz. Oh no. Y'all not gonna come for me. I don't care. I said it. I no. fucking said it. The whiz, the lighting was bad. In the, no. the lighting was terrible. They, that, like, that was they were dark. all uh, internet, Let me finish. The Wizard that was of Oz given, was made in 1942 they, or some the shit. Lighting, the lighting was, and the lighting was great in The Wizard of Oz. Black, it, the shit, half the movie was black and white and you could still see it. Amazing. No. The Wiz, that lighting was bad. That was tricky. Like, whoever did that should be slapped. It was giving Game of Thrones when they were fighting the White Walkers and you couldn't see shit. That's, that's what it was giving. Also, Diana Ross was about 75 years old playing fucking Dorsey, <laughs> looking like a crackhead. She looked crazy. I said it. She looked terrible in that it's movie. That I do not condone around. I don't Christmas care. Is a <laughs> I don't care. One brand, but this does not <laughs> represent both partners' views or That's fine. opinions. That's Please. fine. Let me get my let me get my shit off. Lena Horne, when she is singing that "Believe in Yourself" song, girl. First of all, when was the last time you she, seen this? I watched the Wiz. I was Dorothy in the Wiz once. The actual music is way better than the Wizard of Oz, hands down. Quincy Jones, genius. But the actual movie, stop it. Michael Jackson is a genius. The Michael- costumes, 
No, no, the set, the set, you want to talk about the set when the fucking, the, the subway was beco- coming alive and just running and chasing them for no reason. When Lena Horne was just singing Woo! in the answer. middle of answer. believing yourself and them random ass babies with the clouds I, around their heads. I love like it. Somebody super like it, was like, it was that like, shit was like, who are these kids? Why are they in this film? What is going on? And I'm sorry. The, the, Tin Man songs, snooze fest. I said it. I said it. And then his songs followed up each other. Back to back songs. The real, the original the Tin replay. Man. The original Tin Man died for that shit. He actually got cancer from putting that shit all over his face. He was dedicated. And it was, a, it was masterful. Masterful. I think you're conditioning I don't care what is Judy Garland. Judy Garland? Your conditioning the is conditioned. The ABC, when it aired, it created, it triggered some type of nostalgia and like no, girl. something with, for you. Everybody, people Antoinette, just want to like the way. I don't Y'all agree. just want to like it. I have a no. whole, I have an entire clip that I, and no. I showed Jay and she started cracking up because she knew that I wasn't wrong. But sometimes, wrong. girl. to exhale? Let's, is not the most masterfully written or composed. The wait album, and exhale. The album but wait, carries everything. No, but waiting to exhale is not a remake. Waiting to exhale is not a remake. They so tried to come by the and white take. Man. That's, no, 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 no. Let, no, it, it's not you're proving about my point. No, you're proving my following point. Following the wizard of Obviously Oz. Obviously, it it's, was. Obviously, no, it was, and they didn't do no, it as well. You want to know why? No. And this, this comes to my. I draw my conclusion. Black people are not good colonizers. Black people are visionaries. They invent things. Okay? They tried to come and they, they took the Wizard of Oz and they said, oh, we're going to put a spin on that. No, just do your own thing. That's not your lane. Just be innovative. Just do your own shit. Because that was mid in comparison to the Wizard of Oz. Y'all can unfollow me. Y'all can say. I think you're going to get a lot of trouble. I, I, I do fine. not agree with this. That's fine. Matter of fact, this is a clip. I don't care. The Wizard of Oz it's is anti-black, wave, and I apologize. Black. Antoinette true. is it's heat. True. She's had a hard week, <laughs> and she's not in her right mind. Release you have yourself from the shackles <laughs> of having to like mediocre black art. Okay, <laughs> you're Tracy not Jones going to compare. Was a genius. Okay, no. Harold Arlen was no slouch either. Bitches are still singing somewhere over the rainbow. Some what? They're still singing Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Okay. To be clear, I don't know nobody that's singing Ease On Down the Road. It was fire, though. Niggas are singing Ease On Down the Road. Stop okay. Playing. I'm Niggas just are singing Ease On Down the Road. What, uh, what other songs? The they still sing at home. The, matter of fact, don't play with me. I actually screenshotted this because y'all was, I knew you, I knew. Let me say I something. Knew. It's not I about. I knew that you were going to irritate me. To, don't it's... play with me, Shanti. <laughs> Don't play she with me. She said she was 75 years old. She was 75 years old. Elbows and knees was moving, boy. I said her Michael Jackson was and just knees and elbows. The Wiz, the Wiz was anti-black because they didn't want Stephanie Mills to be Dorothy. I said it. And Stephanie, that was Stephanie Mills' role. Stephanie Mills was Dorothy on on, on Broadway, to be clear. And sang well, the Diana hell out of that Ross, way better than Diana. Listen, now you're also doing Colorism unjust. all up and in through the Wiz. Go ahead. It's not about, <laughs> first of all, the Wiz was the the costuming, the reimagining, the soul that they put on it. It was soulful. Was needed. It was necessary and it was impactful. <laughs> <laughs> Don't it play was exciting me. at that time. It was star studded. Girl, intergenerational. I'm gonna make you watch this clip because we're gonna get flagged if I put it on here on YouTube. But I'm gonna make you watch this clip. I gotta watch the Wiz again, y'all. I remember fucking with it. Go ahead, watch the Wiz. I do remember being slow. I do remember hella slow. I I do remember being terrible. Lighting bad. (laughs) You know, I was like, yo, I'm sleep. I was awake the whole Wizard of Oz. I knew exactly what was happening. Hi. 
You're like lying. The horse on, of like. a different color. <laughs> I was with the shit. Yeah. No, I was bored as shit near the end of the Wizard of Oz. When it, when it came to no, with the Wizard of Oz, when it came to that fucking when he was what, crying and she had to go home. That was like no, three minutes. When it came to they finally made it to the fucking temple, wherever it was. The temple? Where was it where the where the where they the realized castle, girl. The, the nigga wasn't real. Oh anyway. when, the whiz. The when whiz. Read, like the whizz's thing. Anyway, that shit didn't slap all the way to. I was tired too. I was hype as shit. But right girl. when the monkey stopped flying and shit and she <laughs> actually made it to the temple, I was like, this girl, is Girl, that's the last three about? minutes of the movie. Exactly. I would sleep during the whiz midway. I was like, why they at the, why they in the subway? How did they even get to the sub? Why is the subway coming alive? Why are they in this fucking it's factory infinite. with Eveline? <laughs> what was that? They were making I fashion those clothes. babies though. Those babies. Those was weird chaos. babies. <laughs> it was lawless. It the was, Wiz was lawless. Yeah. They were just doing shit. They were just like, all right, we're gonna make a whole just everything is just gonna be spectacle. No through line. Let's just whatever it is, throw it in there. <laughs> and Quincy Jones had to make sense of that shit. He's like, put a beat, put a beat on it, put a beat <laughs> no, on it. No, no. Listen, where's this trash? I, people it's are really going to be it's upset mid. about it. It's people mid. are going to be upset about that. Be, Another be thing mad. that I discovered is that people are really upset about biracial couples <laughs> celebrating Loving Day. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I posted that. It took it down within like one minute. I was like, actually, I don't want to post this. I am <laughs> tickled by it. And I agree. Oh All these God. modern day, it's the modern day couples, right? It's the modern day interracial couples. It's the black man with his white blonde girlfriend holding up signs. Shout. That feels a little like... Uh, it's like have, Tyrese. Congratulations. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Now, some feels off. So give me I the think... destruction of the black family. It's... <laughs> That's what it's giving. It's giving tricky. His it's giving my dad. Is angry by that. Yo, yeah, it's like, giving my dad some with fucking a... respect for that nigga, mama. Stop posting that shit on the internet, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Says the two biracial girls. We said here. As yo, a look biracial... at that biracial ex. I saw it. It's I was like, not. damn, oh, loving day. It was like the twenty. When was it? Twenty five years ago or fifty years ago? Some shit like that. Some anniversary of it. It was like thirty years ago today Listen, is when black black and white people. Did it. I was like, man, I posted my, it and took it down. I was like, it doesn't it triggered feel right. Me. I said, why are dysfunctional <laughs> ass white and black parents Listen, like they didn't shit. know what they was getting themselves into. <laughs> so it triggered so me. I was like, this that is. That is not a happy family. Yo, the funniest thing is my grandma, my dad's mom, she be she says, I wasn't I did not like your mom, which isn't true, but now, you know, revisionist history. So I did not like her. I was just concerned about how confused you kids were gonna be. I just didn't see how that was gonna work. I said, Well, you was right. No, oh, you was right, girl. You should have should have just Listen, stopped the wedding. <laughs> take it from the biracial folks. Stop with that love and celebrate. You can do it inside your house, <laughs> but don't post that shit. I'm going to post it. I'm going to post it. We got to celebrate loving day when all the black men was like, yes, <laughs> big nipples. Yes, I've been waiting my whole life. I can marry you. Hey, lust. All the oh, black were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make my daddy so mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good. Wow. But the but the wild shit is the the lovings, and that was a white man and a black woman. So we still got it. I wrong. support those. I support. I that. support, <laughs> I support that too. I mean, wherever I see it, I'm like, I'm like, girl, you, you. I understand, girl. I know he loving I'm you. Saying, down. Girl, you you I got free. Broaden your horizon. Lifting you. I know that white man loves you. Is trying to understand you. But, for every. For every He's couple of there, I know, you wash your fucking hair. Listen, invested with the YouTubes, buying the mm -hmm. products, helping mm -hmm. you detangle, affirming your hair, telling affirming. you he likes it better with it natural. Good yeah. job. He said, shout you don't out to need all the that. white men loving your. You're a queen. That's what he said. Yeah. And, by, and be dead ass, just supporting them. Taking on <laughs> the. Listen. Child. Yo, the funniest shit. Was that I sent our homegirl 
who loves to go to um damn where is it she loves to go to carnival you know what i'm talking about i don't want to say her name travel mm-hmm. jump mm-hmm. and it was a white man just just whining when i tell you he was giving it i said girl i didn't found your husband and she said you know what you may have Wait, let me find it. she was like she was like you may have um but she was like my loyalty to black men is both a gift and a curse and i said i feel you girl so like i can't go that route oh, i would love to see her with a white man he would take care that lavish lifestyle she living he would be with the shits like what kind of wine do you want tonight dear Flowers say less. Anyway, happy loving day. Shout out to all the ambiguously raised people. I'm gonna say it again. Shout out to all the interracial couples. I I do think you guys should exalt your uh, your relationship, especially if you be in love by your partner. We love love. Just don't post that shit on the internet. <laughs> That's terrible. Do yourself a favor, but we love love. Um. I'm personally triggered because I my parents didn't work out. But for real, for real, all the black women I know with white men, these these are top tier men that I know. Wow. Top tier men. Good people. I fuck with them deeply. Love them. So Wow. I don't know. Shout out um, to you ladies. All right, it's getting late, but we gotta run through politics really quickly. What? We still got politics. <laughs> Yeah, girls. Yeah, oh we ain't been here for a minute. Oh, so they get a long one. Oh my god! I'm this is the fast. I'll go through. I'll go through fast. So I just want a, an update on this baby formula <clears throat> formula shortage issue. I just want to make it really clear that this is this is a bigger this is a bigger conversation uh, because it really exposed the fact that there is a monopoly on baby formula in the U.S. So people were blaming Biden. They they blame Biden for everything. I'm like, y'all, this is a global issue. Like, a lot of these issues are global issues, but whatever. Um, basically, Abbott Sturgis, which is a, a, a company that makes a lot of baby formula, in Michigan, their plant was shut down by the FDA. FDA. Because for, like, just egregious, unsanitary conditions. They had leaky so three rooms. babies died. Yes, three babies died because of a certain bacteria that is very dangerous for newborns. And that was found in, that was found in the, well, first it was found on the baby formula packaging. Then it was discovered that they were like, okay, we need to open the baby formula. It was found within the formula. So then they went to the plant and saw that the plant was a hot ass mess and found the bacteria in the plant. They shut the plant down. This plant apparently supplies like 60, 65% of baby formula, which is insane to all, (laughs) to our entire country. Then you have to consider that Trump with his America first fucking plan, he made it illegal for us to import baby formula from Canada and Mexico because he wanted all of this baby formula to be, you know, produced here in the US. So people were frustrated with Joe Biden because they didn't feel like he was doing enough. And he's like, this shit, I'm trying to get laws passed to overturn what this other idiot did. And I can't even get baby formula in here because of him. And then he tried to do like an emergency bill and over a hundred Republicans voted against it so that they, they would have freed up millions of dollars of spending to help increase the baby formula. So now you have these poor people who have children who need to eat and they're driving across. Some people were driving into Mexico to get formula, into Canada to get formula. It, it, I felt so terrible for these mothers and these fathers of these and these poor babies who don't understand. They don't understand the politics of this shit. They're just fucking hungry. So... I want to also reiterate that only 12 Republicans voted with the Democrats on that bill to release the emergency spending. So who really cares about babies? You know, this is this comes at the same time where they're also not letting women control their bodies and saying that we have to have all the babies. So would love to discuss that further, but can't uh, due to time. Also, I just was, I would just say it, that is probably the biggest 
revealer of the unsustainability of capitalism yes. more than anything. Yes. And the way that politics tries to, it is in alignment with upholding a capitalist society. But that just shows you. These monopolies are just unsustainable. And I'm, I'm also really happy that the FDA did shut the plant down knowing, knowing that this was going to have an effect because what's the what's the what's the other option you have sick babies and they could possibly die like that you have to shut it down so people were frustrated with the fda and then a lot of people are thinking that the republicans i should also add did not help pass this bill because they know that it's going to look bad for joe that during the midterm elections, they can say there was a baby formula shortage. They, we didn't have this. We didn't have that. And most Americans, most people are not going to do their research. So the Republicans are relying on ignorance um, and misinformation to help guide people, guide people's votes and be like, oh, Joe doesn't have a handle on any of this. Um, he also just called out Exxon today about their gas prices. And he was like, they have a ton of ton of places where they could be drilling they're not drilling because if there's a shortage of gas then they can skyrocket these prices and they're also not paying enough taxes and it's right it's capitalism and he's like you know when you get down to inflation and you get down to these gas prices this is a global issue gas is like 11 dollars some places over in europe right now because of Russia and Ukraine and the war and China trying to figure out if they're going to supply Russia with a certain amount of oil and then Saudi Arabia is pissed off at us. Like it's a whole thing. And so you also have to understand that these gas companies know that everybody's trying to go green soon and reduce their carbon footprint. So they're trying to get as much money as they can now before everybody's driving electric vehicles because eventually it will be mandated. Like eventually we're all supposed to phase out these vehicles and get electric hybrid or hybrid cars. So it's bigger than Joe and it's bigger than just Democrats. It's like, I'm just hoping that people are reading between the lines and really understanding what's going on because the president doesn't, this is not like a dictatorship. He can't just say certain things and things get passed with like any kind of um, immediacy. Like people think that he can just have a, like a presidential what is that? Why is that word escaping me now? Decision making? Just no, it's like they, he signs that he makes a president. Oh God, I'm going to remember it in a second. But basically, he can, he can sign something. Obama did like the most of any president. I can't remember right now, but it's just not, it's just not the way politics works. So I do want people to, um, to be vigilant as these things are coming up. And then, of course, I'm actually really happy that we weren't recording, that we had bulk recorded during the Uvalde shooting because that shit had me fucked up mm. with these poor young babies. Also, the mm. Buffalo shooting. Like, there have been 27 school shootings this year. Um, and I don't know what's going to happen. It seems like Republicans are going to give way, they're not going to ban these these assault right, weapons, right? They're not going to ban, um, excuse me, ban them. But what it's looking like is that they are going to have these kind of like red flag kind of laws where if there's signs of mental health, people can't buy guns. Or if there's this, if, like they're going to have these different kind of um, systems in which they monitor more. Um, folks' mental health and that they also might raise the age in which you can buy a gun. But that still doesn't feel like enough. Yeah, well, I was listening to something where they were saying that mental health is not actually... I mean, Oh, you were listening to The Daily. Yeah, that that's not actually the... the No. Signifier or the the reason. Uh, I mean, of course, mental health is like you have... Something has to be wrong with you to go and do an act But like most that. people you don't but know until like they do it. But it's not like a diagnosed, yeah, it's not like something that you can... Yeah, most people you don't diagnose. know. Right, until you do it. Was it was really interesting in listening to that, though, she kind of, th- there was a psychologist that was being interviewed and she was talking about a situation in which parents 
were alarmed that their child was showing signs of maybe doing something dangerous as well, saying writing stuff on the internet as well as talking about purchasing a gun and needed wanted to get him psychiatrically assessed. And in her interview with him, she didn't see signs of like clinical mental illness, but instead this this um, conflict of like who these young boy, it was a boy who this young boy thought he should have been in society, this entitlement that mm. he felt he should have had like in his social ranking mm -hmm. and like his frustration with not having that being met. And that made me think of like this poison that is patriarchy and what what young men think they're entitled to have and like if they're not having access to like social ranking like their only way for them to process the grief in that is like violence or like right. i'm gonna fuck some shit up because i'm not cool or i'm not getting the attention or i don't have access you know to girls or all this stuff that that felt like such a feels like a really right um collective conversation to have but of course you know this blanket of like mental health well and, yeah like, the this, mental this band-aid of oh these people are unwell mental health it's like well the, the other thing is unwell that, in some way like, exactly this whole the, system is fucked up the republicans also don't invest any money into mental health so it's like you can say mental health all you want but what you've you've reduced funds for <laughs> for help with mental health. Um, also, it was executive orders. I don't know why I could not think of that, but the presidential executive orders. Um, the other thing that I do want to say, and we have a Amanda who was on here, who is a teacher, um, very concerning that um, she had a scare at her school where someone brought in a gun and they had to shut everything down and all that. But now I'm just seeing that today, Ohio's governor just passed into law that teachers in Ohio can carry guns in school. And instead of, um, I forget what the, what the amount of training, the hours of training they needed before, it's been reduced now to 24 hours of training. Yeah, I mean, at this, this anyway, it's a longer conversation, but like, again, you can't build this country on violence and then be like, what the fuck is this? Why is this so violent? Like, it just- well, the math ain't mathing. It don't make The math isn't sense. mathing, but it's also that the concept of you stop bad guys with guns with more good guys with guns is also not That's, a Girl, thing. it's all fucked up. It doesn't make sense. It yeah. does. And until you like have a conversation about that, I don't know. I don't under, I don't know that any, I mean, I think of course mandates and, and having a stricter process in which to obtain a gun but also like oh, oh. i don't think that these semi-automatic weapons i don't think that we should have them or have access to them that's just me they're meant to kill they're not meant to protect your home they're meant to like literally kill um i i saw matthew mcconaughey at the white house and he was there and people people gave him people were had mixed feelings about him speaking but he is a resident of Uvalde. So to, I don't think people realize that he is a movie star. And so it's this thing where like, we want celebrities to use their celebrity and to get involved. And then when they do, we feel like, why are we listening to these celebrities? They don't know anything. It's like, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. But he gave a really powerful speech at the White House and it was heartbreaking, the part for me where he had these green Converse sneakers that a parent was holding. And that was the only way that their child could be identified was because this child loved to wear their green Converse sneakers and their body was so mutilated that they could not, it, they had to rely on the sneakers and the DNA testing to even, even identify this body. And so it made me think about, I understand the parents needing the right you know, needing to mourn the way they mourn all these things. It made me think about like Emmett Till's mother and the the thought process of why she wanted that open casket, you know, of like, 
I wish these lawmakers and these people in Congress who won't pass these laws, I wish they were forced to look at those pictures. I wish they were forced to to really see the carnage and understand like the blood that is actually on their hands. Because I, I just think that we, again, going back to like Hinge and just being like desensitized and like dehumanized in a way where like you're not, you're not con- something in you is not connecting to the other human beings around you, like the lives, and to see those sneakers and have that, have that visual, and that parent holding them was just like, oh no, it fucked me up, and I, I hope I hope it fucked other people up so that something can something can change. Um, but stay tuned. This is all information. It's all stuff that we need to know as these midterm elections come, come up. Hope we stay activated. Um, but in very, very other news, we need to, we, again, we bulk recorded for Mad Long, so we have not shouted out new patrons. For those of you who are new, we do have a Patreon channel. We just, we just posted a Patreon exclusive um, this week. We were talking about the Roost Picnic, amongst other things. I don't know where we trailed off to, but I know that we went somewhere. <laughs> and um, so we just want to shout out Letitia, Chandra, Mastermind, Jason J, House of Noir, Blanca C, Jessica Z, Sister KJ, Alanis M, the letter B, Lana H, Stanley J, William C, Teddy O, Yolanda S, Gina D, Alexis B, Kaya, and Jasmine for joining us on Patreon. Go ahead. Wow. That's That's four. That's like four weeks worth of people. So shout out to y'all for, you know, supporting us financially. Welcome to the wonderful world of Around the Way Curls. And we are going to make it our we're going to make it our business to give more Patreon exclusive content. There's always exclusive content every week because we usually stay on later than the episode. We usually press record before the episode, before the audio episode. So there's always a little something extra for folks. Um, But I think we should take a break. We do have two voicemails. Our main topic isn't so long. So I think we can get to the voicemails after the break. But Shanti, please take us out over the lake. Bro, I couldn't even hear that. Boo! No. I couldn't. I couldn't hear that at all. It was all. jazzy. It was jazzy. I couldn't hear eyes. you though. It's given the whiz. It's given slow, slow pace. Sure as uh, the whiz. You know what the whiz is going to get canceled. I don't. I don't cancel me because that that is the realest shit I ever said in my life. I've been holding on to that. You know what the whiz is? Mahogany art. No, it's not. Yes, it oh, I, have to, I can't wait to show you all the uh, mahogany art I saw at a dude day. Uh, I was like, are you serious? Is this uh, real? It was Tupac. I can't wait to show you the picture. Tupac, what? Passing the torch to Nipsey and then Nipsey passing the torch to, to who? Kendrick. Who else was in Fix there? It. But they were riding horses. It's the activities for me. <laughs> it's the activities Imagine that they are engaged in. They're playing cards. Nothing, They're nothing having the last work. supper. Oh, there God. are. It was the horses. Lots of horseback no, riding. Not, I nothing was like, is worse than the than. What is it? It's Martin Luther King doing the LeBron and D Wade lob, <laughs> and Malcolm X is slam dunking it. I'm <laughs> like, yo, this shit is fucking. I, I was can't like, are you us. serious? Is this a real? It's real. They mean I was it. taking pictures. She was like, hey, queen. I was like, yeah, hey, yeah. queen. This is $75. That's it. This is just terrible. That's, the, that's what the whiz was. The last that's supper. The language that you're using is anti-black. It's no, not it's terrible. not. To say it was terrible. You said what's the face was terrible. You said queen Ooh. slim was terrible. And it was. That so how was a is, terrible how is the difference that between me was saying a terrible was terrible and, that, and you saying you're talking terrible, about something with Quincy black. Jones, Diana Ross, I, and, and the first Michael thing Jackson. I said was Quincy Jones was a master. Who else was in there? Who else was in there? Marvin Gaye? 
<laughs> no, Marvin Gaye was not in it. <laughs> you irritate me. Who so. was the Tin Man? What's his name? That, that, that slow ass song. Sly Some Oil to Me was good. But the other one, what was the other one? The other one was the Snooze Fest. I said, sir, shut up. And then his songs were so long. Let me play it. But you know what my jam was? Nobody talks about Miss One. Sweet thing yeah. that we tell you about. A world oh, no, in the she... way things are. Da, 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 da. That was my jam. But it's the music. It's not the visuals. No, I, I really enjoyed the chaos. I loved I loved Girl, the that was the mess. I loved the set. Let me so. can I show you some oh, I can't show you on here because it'll block us. So annoying. When we get off, That's I gotta so show true. you. I have to show you. What's her face? <laughs> Lena Horn looking crazy. <gasps> oh my god. I'm about to cry. What? Look at Blue Ivy Carter. Do you wow. see? Her? Oh my god. Grown. Grown, grown. She has grown. hoops in. Look at her. How hair. old is she? Oh my god. Look at Jay Z. Oh, Antoinette, you're slobbering. Did you see me slobber? Get it together. Oh, well, I'm going to keep it in there, too. I can't see. believe how big she is. She looks how like a little ladybug, doesn't she? She looks like see. a little ladybug. And I love that he's still affectionate with her. She got her motorcycle jacket on. She like, she girl. Said. She said, get me off this jumbo tribe real quick. Basquiat. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> this freak ass Basquiat next Yo, to me. Like... She... Oh, she's so cute. Let me see. I'm trying to find it. She's it's on the shade room. She's so big. How old is she? They can move up fast. The shade room got to get sh- it together. They're not the bad. shade room. It could if they got their shit together. They work for CNN. Oh my god! Look at her. She got lip gloss on. She's she's. This being is more wrong. clear. Look at this one. Hold on. Look. Oh, don't let JoJo see that. Look at Jay-Z. Are you proud of her? Like, oh, Please, let me show you guys. Let me show you guys. Look. She said, stop. You want my hair? You want my hair? Back up, dad. Listen, if your mother's Yo, Beyonce, you better get her truck out. You better show her. I just proof. want to say her fucking twist out. What? She said, you want my hair, and she has lip gloss on. <laughs> She oh, legit God. just said, Dad, you're on my hair. Ivy. I want to be Blue Ivy so bad. Oh, my that. God. He's so proud of her. I can't see it. I just can't believe she that big. I put it in the squad chat. Jersey! Oh, she's so adorable. They, her, so all those kids look like little ladybugs. They do. I cannot. I just can't believe she that what big. What somebody died here? What are you carrying on? That is silly to me. Internet? What? Let's stay focused. Sorry, come on. I'm sorry, I got confused. (laughs) I can't find it. I don't know why it's not coming. My phone died, and I want to see it on my computer. Oh, that's not how it works. Grow up, Shanti. Why why wouldn't you be charging your phone during this whole time? But you could have had your phone on a charger somewhere across the room. Mm-mm. All right. All right. We coming back in with um voicemails. Remember that. <laughs> oh. What what? One twenty eight. And is that blue- oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> the thing is that she's going to be somebody. Like I that little girl. Somebody. No, no, no. Like she's going to be a household name. Like for real, for real, as well. She already is a household name. I'm saying <laughs> that she's going to do what on her own. She gonna stand on her own. Yeah, she's going. Yeah. To- she's going. To- she needs to have a fucking Apparently- hair. Apparently. Apparently, Solange's son. You oh, we didn't talk about that rap. We that rap. Bring it Did up. Did you hear it? 
Bring it up. <laughs> no. Wait, I gotta find it. That rap I just, was, He's just. Uh, you're not me. supposed to. You too. If What's you're his like name? Skin with um, green eyes. You're not meant to be a rapper. And, and I and I unpopular opinion. And I'm rich, you can't be all those things. You be rapping about the hard times. <laughs> what he was? What was he talking Jules. about? Jules. Jules was talking. Jules. People, the comments were eating him up. They was like, your, mother, your mom is Solange, your aunt is Beyonce, and your uncle is Jay-Z, and this is really what you put out? Why Talk they let it happen? They gotta let kids, you gotta let kids but don't express release it. themselves. Thanks for tuning in to you. I did not ask for, I didn't ask for this. She kept showing all the signs, but kept disturbing all my peace. I'm trying to beat the game to niggas, but they always think it's sweet. Just like Future said a while ago, the feds just did a sweet. Fuck the London trip. We gonna get our clothes shipped out from Greece. Is he serious? Yeah. He was joking. No, he wasn't. That was a joke. No, he wasn't. He you was know, it was a, a joke. parody. No, he was not. He wasn't. That, that was a parody on no, the rap culture was... and the in the the stupidity and no. gregarious bravado. You, I don't know what book you've been reading. <laughs> Rashid been talking to you, girl. <laughs> hey, you know what was a joke? Stop! Who is that white woman? Who is that white woman? <laughs> No, that shit made me tear up. Stop, Stop playing. Listen to it. Listen. What? <laughs> Lady, you ain't even blowing like that. Stop. You ain't even hey. giving up. <laughs> Girl, why are you in the mic like that? Why? Why are you in the camera? Why is this white woman singing this song around these like, black children? And, and why is there not like more camera angles? <laughs> It's it's one camera. It's, it's just like, and then them kids with they have one shot. Lena's about ninety seven. The same age as Diana. Diana about to... <laughs> so fucking play with me. Y'all not gonna sit. They had to do Diana one shot because those women were tired. Respect Watch the Diana elderly. sing home. Watch that, and you be like, she needs to go home. <laughs> Get that <laughs> shit fuck home. She looks. It's tricky. That was a tricky era. No body shaming. We're going to get canceled. I'm not body shaming. No, no. It was not body shame. You said she it looked was, like a crackhead. She looked like a crackhead. It had nothing to do with her body. Why? That, that's what came to your mind. It looked. It was the whole look. It was the look she was giving us. It, it was, was the, the clothes. look she was giving the camera. Look, Lou's upset. It was the look she was giving the camera. I said to Jay, I was like, was there even a Toto? What was What was Toto? A rat? Oh, a rat my and a rat. God. You keep trying to, you keep trying to compare around. black excellence to white excellence. <laughs> this isn't black excellence. There's so much, so much of black everything is far more excellent than white anything. This was the one thing that I was like, y'all, that ain't make us, come on. Black people do everything better for the most part, except for the Wizard of Oz. You can't, what are you doing? Silly. That was silly. That was silly. Still, I, I do not condone. I did laugh. I did keep key, <laughs> but I do not condone, nor do I share the views of internet. The Believe in yourself. Who? <laughs> Girl. All right, we got babies go was like, what the? They were fuck? like, whose cousins did they just put in the movie <laughs> just to appease them? Random ass cousins. And, that's what I'm saying. She said big babies on top of it. You're rude. <laughs> Big ass kids. Big ass kids. Anyway. So. Are you ready? I think this is the end of the episode. No, it's not, Shanti. You're so irritating. <laughs> and we are back. <laughs> Irritate yourself. So we have two voicemails and I'm going to play them, goddammit. Shanti's trying to get off this episode early. <laughs> and I'm sick of it. I'm just sick of it. So here we. Oh, it's a lot of feedback, huh? I hope that's not what this episode sounds like. Can you hear that? I can't. I'm nervous. All right. Hi, ladies. I was just calling um, to 
not necessarily about the um, episodes, but wanted to see what your take was on uh, this issue. By the way, love you, ladies. Avid listener, avid follower of you since back of the day, natural hair tutorials and all of that. Um, love you both dearly, and please continue to do what you do because you are amazing. Um, but anyway, I just went on a date yesterday. This would be the third date. And the guy kind of asked, okay, you got this bill, right, type of a thing. So normally that would be okay. I mean, I'm okay with paying for the bill and everything like that. What is your take on, so my question is, what is your take on women paying the bill when, you know, you're in a dating situation and the man is courting you? Um, I was just thrown all the way back because our initial meeting and everything like that was amazing, great conversation. He's older. So that immediately just threw me off. And it also triggered me in a way, this this, this life, because he was like, what is he, is he testing me or what is this? Like, and all of the other days have went well and everything, but that particular, you know, situation threw me off. And mind you, leading up to that the whole night, it was, it was, you know, it was kind of fishy. Like Antoinette says, it was tricky. It was tricky. <laughs> um, but... What is your take on that, um, if you don't mind sharing? Love you, ladies, and thank you so much. Bye. I hear so much static. I'm scared. Do you have an air conditioner going or something? I'm scared. Um, Shanti, you go first. Have thoughts. First of all, <clears throat> you all cannot ask me to compare my situations <laughs> and what I'm used to <laughs> with y'all. First of all, I think you have to stand in, recall, stand in what you're used to and what you, what precedent you want to like set by the third date. I personally, especially if like these are expensive dates, right? Like, Dinner is expensive. So if a man's dropping $75 to $100, I automatically would be like, oh, you know, let me let me put my card down or at least pay, pay split C's. But if that's not something that you're used to, so that feels like alarming to you, I feel like that's a red flag for you or that that's information for you to like, pin and hold on to especially if it is in contradiction to what you want and what you're used to doing for me i've been like here you go swipe without him even having to ask the fact that he asks is information for you is that that's not how he's rolling he is expecting you to contribute in some way and i don't think he's wrong for doing that i think he's kind of sharing with you where his boundaries are, what he's feeling, where he's at. Nothing's wrong with that. Um, but if it's in conflict with what you're expecting, then I think that's a lot of information that you should like be like, oh, okay, this is this is how the relationship is probably going to unfold. And if that doesn't feel like something that you're used to or want, then you know, take take that into account but my raggedy ass would been like of course i'm going to pay yeah I, i'm in complete alignment with you because i'm used to coming out of my pocket uh we're not we, we ain't we ain't we're not doing the best things out here though someone well, would never or someone you know would I, never someone and they would don't date people never. that ever ask them to do it but i think that's a conversation you have to have with yourself just like you said i also think it's interesting when women say like, you know, this man is courting me. I feel like you're courting each other. That's mm. how I approach it. It's like, I, I don't... Mm. If there is someone that I'm less interested in that's really trying, um, one, I get nervous about that because I feel like I'm taking advantage of them. And so I, I probably wouldn't let them pay all the time because I know, like, 
Um, I, I, he's all right. I don't know how I really feel. I don't want him to, you know, be trying to win me over with the money. Um, and then going, you know, kind of depleting his own funds based off of the, you know, and I know it's not going to go anywhere, but I do think when you're pursuing each other, and this is an unpopular opinion full of them today, I do think that it's, it's give and take. And I think that we're at a place now where women, you know, we're not sitting at home by yourself. We're not, we're not housewives anymore. We're working. We have incomes. We have things where we can contribute. And I think that some of these traditions are rooted in women relying on men, you know, women being home or you're being courted because you rely on your father's income because you still stay with your father and the father gives you away at the wedding because you're kind of his property, like shit like that. That's dead. So if we really want to, to me, to to me, and I'm like, if we really, if I really want to kill that in my mind, I'm like, well then, I show up and I contribute. It is nice. It is, I will say, <laughs> on the rare, the rare couple of times when when men have, you know, just taken care of it and it hasn't been a thought um, for them, there was like never a question about it. I have felt the initial thing in me, I felt uncomfortable of like, uh, I should do something or I need to, I need to pay them back in some kind of way or I need to, and and I'm realizing like, no, you can just accept things. And if that's what you want, then I think you're used to, or, but you could be used to something and it's not a necessity. So if it doesn't bother her in a way where she's like, you know what? Okay. I can contribute. I'm used to not doing that, but it's not a deal breaker. Then let it be that. And I think it, I think it's okay for you to be honest about that. It's information. If it is a deal breaker for you, then it's a deal breaker for you. Well, it's no, it's not no. for me. Kick them it's, to the curb. Yeah, I, I just remember exactly. serving. When I was a server, there was a lifestyle and there was a courting practice that was beyond my scope of understanding. Like well, there were wasn't very wealthy, very, very wealthy men coming in and like, it, it was very rare that the the and and women they just knew what it was. They like yeah, they reach for their purse. Never. Yeah. I I and all in ser in serving in fine dining, it was very rare that I that the married women, the people dating, that women reach for their purse. But, I, I also think what what he does, where you live. Like I live in New York. Shit is dumb expensive here. Everybody's hustling and trying to make it happen. I do not expect the man to pay for everything for me i just don't because i you're gonna go fucking bankrupt how are you even putting money away then if you're paying everything for me listen to her i'm serious (laughs) but also internet again she might be dating the type of caliber of man that she knows that he's good and and if he know you're good right if he has it has it that right these are all questions for you if he has it has it in that way and he's still like now you better you need to pay for it, and he knows that maybe you don't. Then, then maybe that's a conversation. That, yeah, that. that's information. Is something to look into. It's tricky. <laughs> tricky. We're talking word. to these working class girls here. Hey, listen, <laughs> hello. All right, one more, one more, one more. All right, so just hear me out. Internet, I know you're not really dating women right now. I, I don't know. I don't know that. But I'm going to assume you're not, because we talk about men more so than women. But I just found out that you like women. So I was wondering, like, if you were to explore it again, would you consider a poly relationship? But it would have to include Amanda because, oh, my God. Oh, my God. See, see how I didn't give my name, because I'm in a whole relationship. and But, oh, my God. Girl. It, was really, it was blowing, and you in the background with the ad libs, like feeding her the lyrics. Like I think that's what I need in my life every single day. I think that would motivate me to go and start my job and be the best person that I could be. Like it doesn't even have to be a sexual relationship. Like I just would love you all to come have home with me and let's sing and talk about life. You know, let's let's play stage. Let's do all the things. <laughs> That y'all like to do. Whatever y'all want to do. But, damn. Can y'all bring her back on the show, please? <laughs> like, the energy between the three of y'all is infectious. I absolutely love it. All right, I'm going to go before I get kicked off. 
Love y'all. See y'all Saturday, 2.30 in Philly. We know who the fuck that is. Is that who I think it is? Child. She said she... Girl. I saw a wedding ring on your finger, goddammit. What? Wow. I'm punching you through the I'm fucking you, airways right even, now. I'm <laughs> telling you that these queer... It ain't no better, baby. It, it is the <laughs> ghetto over there and you're proving for them. And, I'm, and in two weeks, y'all be fussing and fighting like it wasn't nobody's <laughs> goddamn business. Disrupting That the is funny. First of all, Wow. First of all, if I was in a polyamorous relationship, it would not be with Amanda. That's disgusting. That's my First of family. all, d- don't you listen yeah. to the podcast? Internet is not down for <laughs> a polyamorous actually... relationship. <laughs> well, you know, I'm starting to think maybe I'm going to just have to figure that out one day. But I... <laughs> if you listen to the podcast, you know, Internet is not really truly attracted to women. That was one woman who won my heart and soul and not my body because I was like, skirt, nope. I wish, I'm telling you, if I, I think about it, when I got that raggedy text from that man talking about send me a pic, the first thing I thought was like, a woman would have never wrote me this. A woman would have, she would have been so much smoother and better uh, and knew what to say. Just hate it here. I wish I was into, I would, I would not be outside. I know it because I say all the time, and it is not an unpopular opinion, I bag bitches <laughs> bitches love me <laughs> i have this big dick energy over here but i'm also femme so they're with it and i'm just like here we are but um shout out to you thanks for the <laughs> thank you for the love i think that you should maybe not say things like that when you're in a relationship with someone unless you have an understanding <laughs> but it's a poly. it seems it seems to be a poly i don't know if it's poly she said that our her relationship with amanda and she said her relationship with me would have to be poly oh. if she was amanda in on it not the logistics we have and to she, If it out. was Polly, she probably would have said a name. Oh, raggedy tell self. Get it together, bitch. <laughs> you don't know. Anyway, thank you for calling. We have so many voicemails. And I don't remember what they I need to remember what they are, but I marked them as not played yet. That's that's like how I categorize them. So I just try to listen and and figure out which ones. But shout out to y'all for calling. I I appreciate it. And if you have something to say to us, if you want to tear my ass up about my whiz take, please call us at 215-948-2780. That is 215-948-2780. Now, Shanti, I just feel like there's something going on in the moon. <laughs> oh, it, and it's I a full to... moon is tomorrow. Is it? Mm-hmm. Full moon and guess what? This is hurting. Scorpio. This was song. Sagittarius. Oh, it's Sagittarius. Yeah. I, what does that mean when there's a full moon in your sign? Girl, you know I don't know, girl. That's what I'm saying. You just say anything. <laughs> I think it's 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 more expansive. It's playful. It's less mood. It's less like emotional. Y'all, it's more... the way Shanti been reading the, the dictionary and thesaurus, <laughs> you get on my nerves today. Uh, nigga, you I just, just say said words. emotional words. words. I you just said sales. <laughs> This girl, just words, it's words, 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 immersive, you know, you know platonic, what that means. Uh, you know, platonic, why don't you irreverent, <laughs> you know, speculative. <laughs> why don't you Google what it means to have a full moon in Sagittarius? I tried to, that shit was shit. not clear. They were saying the same shit on the horoscope. <laughs> That's all that horoscope shit is. Expensive, words, words, cumulative, words. pink. <laughs> Boom! That's so I don't have time for it. No, I wanted to do a temperature check. Because, like you, I said, we said you, that we had a we had a rough week. We had a rough business week. We had a scare. We had a business scare. <laughs> we think we handled it, but with runaway curls. It might it might not be around much longer. <laughs> don't we don't say know. That. Like I'm don't say that. <laughs> we think we handled it. We don't know yet, but we try to handle it. But um, temperature check. How are we feeling? What's going on? We haven't recorded. I felt I felt good at first about not recording. I'll be honest, because I was super busy at work. And then I did miss it. I did. I was like, oh, wow, it's Monday. I'm not going to talk to her again. Okay. So I'm on audio is I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm back. I'm back. But, um, you know, the Roots picnic happened. And I felt like we did, okay, I, you know. 
I felt like there were we debriefed. We've already built out a whole live show afterwards. We've already wow, come up that's with the segments. energy that you have for it. That's really your base is that we did okay. It is. Wow. I'm sorry. I think we did okay. I think wow. we were a solid B. Honestly, that's pretty like, good. I think we were a solid yeah. B. Okay, it's like for a me, C-. I'm like mm. you are a tiger mom. No, it, no, I'm not. I'm just saying, like, I see where where it could go, where it's going to go, where it's going to be, and I'm excited for that. I just see us doing th- more, right? So I kind of sat with that, and I, and I definitely wanted to figure out how to debrief it, how to, and not to make it seem like we failed, because we didn't at all. We were fine. So I was kind of battling that. Trying to, I didn't want you to. I thought that you were excellent. I didn't want you to think that I felt like we did bad, but I was, I was reflective on that, and always trying to grow. And then I was also thinking about. I was looking at the footage, <laughs> and baby, I, I felt. You know what? I I was premenstrual. I was about to get my period the very next day, and so as. If, for all the women listening, you know how you feel when you're about to get your period. You feel like you're pregnant, like your ovaries are sticking out. You feel bloated. You water retention, all the things. And I remember you had left the house. You had went to get us like smoothies. And I woke up and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was just like, okay, girl, you don't feel your best right now. You're probably having body dysmorphia because you are about to get your period and your mind plays tricks on you. But this is the body that you're in. This is what it looks like. It's the same body, whether you're smaller or bigger, that you're going to have to figure out how to love. I literally like had a whole conversation and was just like, put your clothes on and get ready and show up. And I feel like I did that. I feel like when I stepped out, I, I didn't hide my body. I wasn't anything baggy. I was like, this is it. Right. And then I saw the pictures and was like a little, I started to pick with myself a bit and I had to have another conversation with myself and it was like, okay, what are you really feeling right now? Because everybody knows this is something that I go back and forth with where the, the thing that bothers me the most is my, the way that I feel it's an inability, I think, to take care of myself in the best way. Like when I look at myself, I know like, this isn't your best self, not because it looks a certain way, but because of how you feel, like you might feel lethargic. You might feel uh, like heavy. You might like, you. I don't feel great. My joints mm. might hurt. My this, my, are you resting well? Are you this? Are you eating well? How does your stomach feel? Like all these things. And I feel like I know how to do it. And it bothers me that I'm not disciplined enough to do it. Like to really just, de- and it's hard. And I think part of it is that you have to face certain things, right? You have to, there's a whole psychology around, you know, weight and how it affects your mental health, your eating habits and how it is connected to stress and how it's connected to sadness and loneliness and just emotional eating or whatever it is. And I was listening to another podcast. Um, oh, I forget what it was called, but it was good. And it was about a man who had recent, recently lost a bunch of weight and he did it by like calorie counting and like dealing with, um, keeping a food journal and dealing with his habits around why the, why he was doing. Yeah. I listened to it. He had an app. Yeah. And I have used that app before and that app is, is fine, but it can make you a little crazy. It can make you obsessed where you're all you're thinking about is food and losing weight. You're waking up and the first thing you're doing is weighing yourself. And then it was like, I don't want to be that person either. Like, I just want to be and live a healthier lifestyle. And so I think that's a lot of the conversations that I've been having with myself of like, you have this new lifestyle where you don't get up and walk to the train, you know, the gym, I'm still not comfortable with, with COVID because it's raging again. And you're in the house a lot. 
So you're less active. So how do you incorporate health? Like you're, and I keep going into like, you're getting older. I don't want to look up. And then five Mm -hmm. years from now, Mm -hmm. I might have other health issues or other, Mm -hmm. you know, like I've always Mm -hmm. been super flexible. I'm starting to feel stiff. Like I'm starting Mm -hmm. to just feel the age in my body. And I'm like, it's now or never. And so in looking at those pictures, I think for the first time, I didn't look at myself and feel like, oh, disgust. Or it wasn't about how I looked. It was more about like, okay, how do you feel? And why do you feel, do you really feel your best? And so that was like the reflection. But I think the first, I think I may, I remember sitting down on the stage and thinking, and there were pillows, thinking and going to take a pillow to put it on my legs to like cover myself and then thinking like, no, don't do that. You're going to show up. Like, this is what you look like. Just sit. And so it's a step. And I know that people are going to get on me and be like, Antoinette, like, do you want people to stop you. doing that? No, it doesn't bother me because it, it's out of love. Like it's not people. It's only when I feel like they're, they're misinterpreting something when they're like, I hate that Antoinette hates herself. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa I didn't say that too. I was just like insecure about certain things like everyone else. Right. But that is something that I've been, that I've definitely been dealing with. And then the other temperature check for me right now is that I just don't feel inspired at all with my work. Like there was a point where I was like learning things and it was, and now I'm just like, ugh. it's just money at this point and it just being in this house with it i i have to figure out how to make it work for me or to leave i don't know but it it was working for me for a little bit and maybe it's because i'm transitioning to another brand again i don't know but i just feel like the days are passing me i feel like the days are passing me and I have a friend and he, he was almost, I talked to him today and he, this is a month where he almost died in June. Um, and he always talks about like how he was just having a regular day. And then one day he woke up and there was a car on top of him. And he was just underneath the vehicle, hoping that he survived. And then after, and he was hit by a car, obviously, but afterwards he was realizing like, if that could have been it for me. Did I do enough? And so it's, it feels a little morbid, but I'm, I guess I'm taking that on where I'm feeling that these days kind of pass me. And like, it's like the roots picnic or maybe a trip or maybe this thing that will, these like little carrots that are like these nice, you know, things that I enjoy, but then I'm back to the days passing. And I don't want to live for those little carrots. Like I want my life to, does that make, is it making any sense? Mm -hmm. I want Mm -hmm. my life to feel a certain way. And I just, I have to figure out, and I have to create that though for me. And there was a point where I was, where I was like intentionally waking up and like looking at my house, looking at my plants and I just feel like when you get certain things, you want them so badly, and then you get them and you're off on to the next thing. And you're, it's like nothing's ever good enough. You're just constantly chasing the next thing that's going to fill you up. So I don't want to do that either. So I, I'm just navigating like my happy and either creating it or recognizing that it's not here. What would be creating it? That's what I'm trying to figure out. That I'm trying to remember... And recall what mm. it was that that I went where when I was really feeling it in this space, and I know that I was working out. That was when I was working out doing um, Atari's fitness plan. I know that I was reading more, um, and I was the possibilities. I think were more exciting. Like I, I was in this new space. I saw it a certain way. I was like, oh, I'm gonna. You know, maybe I'll share it with somebody sometime. Somebody will be over here. And I guess maybe because that's not happening. I don't know. I don't know. But I was excited about all of the possibilities. And right Mm -hmm. now, I think I'm really focused on what's not. 
And so I'm getting lost in that. Even, even focus, even with my health, even focus on like the fact that I, what, what the fact that I'm not disciplined enough or I'm not taking care of myself. And then I just, I'm feeling stuck instead of like Tracy Ellis Ross always says, you know, let the space between where you are and where you want to be excite you instead of terrify you and depress you. So I need to get back to that. Figure out what that is. And it could just be the week. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But that that's where I am, where I'm just like, I, I don't know if, am I, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Is there something? How I'm are you supposed to, to know what you're supposed to be doing? I think I think it's when you wake up. I was another thing. I was watching fucking Oprah, and she asked that question to some guru. I can't remember who it was. And they said it's when you it's when you are in alignment when you don't when feel you don't conflict, feel like you're betraying yourself yeah. when you don't feel like you're betraying yourself. So do you and you feel like you're in a space of betrayal for yourself? I don't feel like I'm in a space of. I, it's not betrayal necessarily, but I don't feel the growth that I did feel. So either I need to take on a new, a new challenge with my work, or I need to let it, let that, the fact that I'm not that challenged right now, I need to channel that energy into something else. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And take advantage of the fact that like, oh, mm -hmm. it's slower. It's this. So yeah. if you have time, then why aren't you working out in the middle of the right. day? Right. Putting it, or putting it to yourself. Or why aren't you going here researching yeah. something for the blog? Like you're sitting yeah. around and waiting for some. It's so much easier when yeah. somebody tells you what to do. It's like, I yeah, know, yeah. I don't know. I know how I want to feel, but I just want somebody to help me put one foot in front of the other. But you have to. It's corny. It's the worst. It is the absolute worst. And very frustrating. And a lifetime's worth of journey and tours. Corny. And I definitely don't have <laughs> And it's by any means. What are you feeling? Because I know you I feel it existential angst. Gearing up to the roots. Um... I felt a lot of pressure around finances. Sable, the business has been really slow and feeling just like, what am I, what am I, what am I going to do? You know, reckoning with the idea of you working towards something, working hard at something, and then that thing doesn't work and like the energy that it takes to pivot. I'm not scared of pivoting things, but I felt very much at a loss mm. and being like, and also feeling a sense of, you know, the, 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 the main question of why, like what, what is it that I'm really wanting and working towards? And the fact that a lot of my angst and my attention goes around money makes me feel, I just know that that's not right. It feels perverse to me. It feels unsustainable. It feels like, no, this is, this is not, it's just, it's not working. So, you know, um, I felt good about the Roots picnic. I was, um, I mean, all the logistics of stuff, you know, I, I felt nervous around the idea of going up and performing. I felt nervous about, but I felt like there was a, um, I felt like it felt natural to us. I feel like it's something that of course we're gonna go into and be in practice of, but it didn't feel wrong or didn't feel out of place or like um hard it didn't feel like oh my god i got a whole nother challenge ahead of us a whole other thing it felt like there was some ease to it and then i felt really uplifted by everybody that came out to support and it became like again it was like oh i still don't quite understand what around the way curls means to 
other people. And I think there's, I don't, because I'm still trying to figure out what it means to me. And I know that this sounds wrong, but the idea that anything that I do is only meant for other people and it is not connected to like a growing or something inside of me also doesn't feel sustainable to me. So I feel like I'm slowly, like for me to say, oh, I do, I, I, I'm worked on created around the way curls so that we can help other people and we can, you know, connect with other people. I feel like that's a beautiful intention. I feel like, um, I feel like that is a natural byproduct of me actually being present and like authentically um, in practice with something in myself, right? Like if I'm if I'm just cr showing up here because like oh I'm trying to help other people and I'm not in practice or creating some growth in myself, I think that it's not going to read authentically to other people and people are going to pick up that it's just, it's not from a real place. So I think, and I still don't have that answer. I still don't have that pitch for around the way curls or sable of like really identifying, oh, this thing is doing this. I'm doing this like energetic inner work with this thing. And it's the success or the connection or like the art that's created from it is a, that connects with other people is like, I can identify and name it. So I'm still working at that. But as of late, um, I feel like I'm getting closer to it just by just just by showing up and, and trying to do all the, the things um, and showing up and doing all the things and trying to really be present as to what inner work is required to, to show up authentically. I realize that I'm a crazy person and like I'm trying not to listen to myself anymore because the thoughts and the narrative, narratives that I create in my head are so off majority of the time that there's this other part of me that's become, I feel like it's becoming awakened. That's like, oh, you're like, your, your, your brain is doing this thing and it's not you. And like, you can't trust it. You know, you and I, in all of our business stuff, stuff has come up where I realized like, oh, your, your brain is making up this story and you're fully identified and like believing it. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. And it's not, a trustworthy thing to follow. So I'm becoming aware that like, oh, 90% of the things that I, tr that I think I have to have some detachment from it because it's, it's not, it's not from a place of truth. Right. And I feel like I I've been talking to a lot of people that same lady, her name is Carolyn Mace. We talked about her before. She's the lady that Oprah interviewed that said, you know, you're on the right track when you're not betraying yourself. So she's like my Catholic white lady gnome, little mystic lady. And she was talking about how the collective of people are breaking away from these polarized ideas. And we talk about it before of what's right and what's wrong. And like the collective is now moving towards Great. and trying to understand all that's lays in, in between. And I find when my mind goes to this far extreme, I can't trust it. If my mind goes to this far extreme of like, this isn't going to work, this is a failure, or it goes to this other extreme of like, oh, nothing else, it doesn't matter. Like, I can't trust either one of those polarized thoughts and about 90% of my thoughts are, are very extreme. 
So I'm just, I'm just sitting and listening to myself and being aware that I can't listen to myself and I, and something else is, is you coming have from discernment. that. <laughs> it's not, it's discernment, but it's also like, you just have to let it pass too. It's like even less of like, oh, I'm going to pick this thing and I'm going to pick this thing versus being like, all right, I'm, I'm just watching these things go. And like, I can't move. I can't make decisions. I can't even engage with people if I'm reacting from either one of these like polar ends and like you just have to wait or just explore what's in the in the middle and that's just what I've been sitting with and it feels I often feel like a crazy person I often feel really unwell because in observing my thoughts I'm like these are insane and I've been listening to these my whole entire life and moving from them and I can't do it anymore. I just like literally can't do it anymore. So I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what's going on over here. It makes sense. I think that, I think we're both hearing things in our heads and trying to figure out, because there's these voices the voices in our heads. I feel like that's the name of this episode. But there's these voices. I feel that sometimes it's your intuition and it's guiding you. And then sometimes it's just like you're watching yeah. Stranger Things, like the upside down. It's like, yeah, like yeah. it's like the Demogorgon that mm-hmm. like took Will over. It's mm-hmm. like that vibe of this is not guidance. This is complete fear or this is paralyzing or this is just, just not chatting. true. Yeah, it's just not true. And it's yeah, really and hard to figure out which one is which. I think the more that you're aware of it, the more you strengthen that other part of you that's just like in the middle or it's like, it's far more quiet and it's far more, it's less reactive. It's just, yeah, it's just, I, it's calling you to sit with the discomfort more than act. And then you're like, fuck no, I don't want to sit with this. I got to get out of this. I got to change. To sit with the comfort as well. That's why I was saying like, with the comfort. Mm-hmm. that's why I kept saying, I'm trying to rem- remember and get back to when I was feeling mm-hmm. like there were so many possibilities. And I had like a, that excitement to me. Because Mm -hmm. whatever that practice was, was the practice I need to be in, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, I think that we sit in discomfort a lot or we avoid it or whatever, but I I don't think that we recognize when when we're comfortable and how we've gotten there and good comfortable, like, you know, uh, growing, and feeling excited and energized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that's, that might be the practice of recognizing when the discomfort comes. I, maybe it's just um, a different approach or it could even be semantics. But for me, it's like, I wanna, I recognize that I'm, I'm not comfortable right now, that I'm, I am feeling discomfort and I'm not interested in sitting in it, but I am interested in reflecting on what is causing it, how I'm contributing to it, and then figuring and remembering like what it was not to be here and getting back into that practice. What if you can't think yourself, think your way out of discomfort? Like if you broke, if you have a broken limb, it's, it heals when it heals. And no matter if you're thinking, what what if it's not an intellectual thing that is only an energetic thing that you mm. have to, you can't think your way out of it? Because then you're just increasing the chatter in your head. And then you're just susceptible to the polarized parts of being like, well, I got to do all this. But no, I got to do all this. And if I don't do it versus well, like... I what feel if like, it's not an intellectual practice? Well, I feel like there are certain practices that you could put in place. If I have a broken limb, I don't want to just sit and folk and sit in the fact that I have a broken limb. I want to. How can I enjoy my time while I'm stationary? How can like when? Okay, when did I feel good? All right, are those things even? 
accessible to me right now with this broken limb? If not, then what would I enjoy? Is it reading a new book? Is it coloring? Is it whatever? Like I have to have practices in place for me so that mm-hmm. I don't stay in that because once I'm in it, I'm in it. Like I, I, I have a hard time getting out of that place. And so I just want to recognize the things that that help me out of that. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. It's like, it, I think it's going to shift. I do recognize that there are some things that you just have to pass. It's like a breakup, but I, but I don't want to sit in, in that, in that feeling either. Just well, sit yeah. forever. I, I don't know that the sitting is a, um, a negative thing. I guess that's my thing. I don't, I don't know think that it's the, negative. The sitting or the being with it is, Yeah, it's in between. It's, it's, yeah, I don't it's think not it, good or I don't bad. It's like sitting and being with it. I think that you have to be with it. It's like when we were talking about Kintsugi, when the broken pieces are in your hands. But for me, like they're in your hands. You feel the weight of it. And I just want to reflect on it. I want to examine it. You know, I want to sit and, fig- and and think like, all right, and just be activated in it. I think sometimes mm-hmm. stillness is fine. Definitely, but... I'm not saying to skip over that step. I'm just saying that there's a step after that for me. Because sitting in it, and for me, I'll stay. You, you're you scared you'll stay. But you I'll, don't I will stay. I'm telling mm-hmm. you I will. I've done it. Mm-hmm. I've done it where I've abandoned myself and just been like, fuck it. Mm-hmm. And just stayed in that. So. But I think we're both. Exa- I think. I think we're both in. Good places. I really do. I think that we're just two people who. Are striving. Are striving to. to For something. I don't even know if we know what it is. But it's some sort of feeling. Some sort of. I think breath like freedom, like weight that just, I don't know, the, the lightness for me. It's like, I just want to feel a lightness. I don't want to feel the burdens of the, the world every day. Like, goddamn, I don't want to manage misery. You know? Solemn mm-hmm. podcast. <laughs> I have a, I have a um, quote. Okay. If you refuse to let your suffering lie upon you for even an hour, if you constantly try to prevent and forestall all possible distress away ahead of time, if you experience suffering and displeasure as evil, hateful, and worthy of annihilation and as a defect of existence, then it is clear that you harbor in your heart the religion of comfortableness. Pessimism is a feature of life. It's a feature of life we often try to run away, run away from. By running away from it too quickly, we cut ourselves off from the opportunity to embrace this darkness and to embrace the lessons that it often brings. And we often also cut ourselves off from the deepest kind of relationships which we can have with other human beings. Relationships based around confession of suffering And I think that essentially all good friendships are about confessions, one sort or another. Confessions are things that the rest of the world thinks of as an unacceptable, thinks of as unacceptable, Bart, but are in fact a part of human life. So I think we over here confessing to a bunch of strangers our suffering and revealing the darkness that I think all of us are managing and trying to sit with and trying to live with and trying to find, give meaning to, but uh, it's a shared experience. So thank you for allowing me this place of confession. Forgive me, Queen, if I have sinned. And I'm honored to hear your angst and sorrow. (laughs) You know what? I will sit with my 
I will sit with my discomfort and watch The Wiz tonight. <laughs> you That's will sit in a place of great. <laughs> I'm going to sit and be uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> okay. Uh... Here we are. No, thank you for that quote. Maybe that's another clip. Hot takes. A couple clips came out of this. This is good. <laughs> It'll be productive. That's good. I'm like, I'm this is all for not. This is all like, for not. This is good. <laughs> clips. New Patreon followers. I'm like, all right, yeah, we got the wisdom. We're going to make it successful. We got the loving coming. clip, and we got the <laughs> quote. That's three clips. It's pretty good. Let me put some respect on the nigga who said that. I don't even know. I, I mean, know. Like, that's my it? idea. A black person said it now. Who said it, Shanti? I don't know. Well, I you just know. read it, so where was it? I copied and pasted that, John. Oh, <sighs> the plagiarism for me. Lord. <laughs> I'll tell you a black person said it. No, all right. you have to do is copy it and paste it into Google and it'll come up. Copy the whole quote and paste it into oh Google. Oh my god, that is from Goodreads. No, Goodreads. Oh, shit. Goodreads is a website. I'm. <laughs> there I go. Okay, she said Goodreads. <laughs> I have to go. I I can't deal with you right now. Shanti, it's Nietzsche. <laughs> anyway, Nietzsche. Nietzsche was the nigga that was like, "Listen, this means nothing. <laughs> Suffer." It was Nietzsche. Fred, Frederick Nietzsche. Is this Why is Frederick? Frederick? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's German or some shit. It's definitely not Frederick. Nietzsche, then that's a philosopher that we know by last name, but I don't know this nigga's first name, and I apologize. God help me, for I have not, I have gone through public schools. All right. This was a good episode. Right? Let's just end it. Please. Frederick? It's too Friedrich. long. It's already Friedrich. Friedrich. <laughs> Friedrich. 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 Roddy Rich. Nietzsche. I gotta go. I'm done. I'm done Freddy, with you. Freddie Nietzsche Suaze. Let me tell you I what. Don't have another four minute fucking quote and not know who said it. All right. Don't I might do. Shit. I might will. I might will. He's German. That's for sure. Let me see this nigga's name. Anyway, Shots he's a great philosopher. Done. Great philosopher. <laughs> Nietzsche, I know. I've heard you've heard that before, right? Yes. You can't say his first name. <laughs> All right, everybody. Shout out to him. Next week we'll be back with <laughs> more existential angst and unpopular opinions and voicemails and rush through politics. So with <laughs> that <laughs> we are out. We are out. Not two hours and 30 minutes. Two hours I mean, and 30 minutes? It won't be that no. long. We were talking Not a little too bit. long. They'll be I happy. Pee my pants. Or and so done. you don't seem happier. You seem more sad than when we started this. You just, I feel something come over you, and I'm sorry. No, you want to know. Who was the person that you call that? The, of the group, who was the person that you call, that you're like, this person's gonna make me feel better. <laughs> it's not you. Amanda? I feel like Amanda. I be trying with like Amanda. None of y'all. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> honestly. Amanda will sometimes make me feel worse. Or Amanda, you know what Amanda likes to do? She likes to be like, girl, I know because I, and then she'll, <laughs> she'll one up you with your pain. You'd be like, damn. She's like, girl, I lost a leg yesterday. <laughs> she be like, girl. My Lyme's disease. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, god damn. All right, never mind. She's stressed. Girl, look. Oh my god. Yeah, none of y'all make me feel good. That's bad. Yeah, that's also something you need to correct. You need what? new friends. You need new friends, and that's okay. That requires honesty. Listen. Who do you call when you want to feel better? Because I don't feel like you call I don't me want to feel better. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to do. You try to sit with it. <laughs> I just try. I'm not looking to feel better. I call people that will go deeper into the sorrow and be like, yes, yeah, it's a collective sorrow. 
unsustainable. The apocalypse is coming. And I'm like, yes. That is not good. <laughs> it's not. You just be wanting to sit in it. I'm like, girl, get up. No, I, I'm not. I'm just not trying to be scared of it. It is. It is. I can't move it. No, I pain is our friend. It. We learn from. We learn from pain. We grow in pain. We do. I can't. But move I don't want to romanticize it either and be like, oh, pain, pain. I'm gonna sit in my pain. It's like, all right, that sounds like a fucking TikTok phrase. Get a fucking mm-hmm. book. Read a book. Damn. No. The Warriors won. Good for them. Anyway. Yeah, you stressed me out. Why? Because you made me think about... Because I feel like you always be trying to tell me to sit in my pain. And I'm like, yo, shut up. You do what works for you. It makes sense for you. It is not... It's not sitting... In, I, my thing is, is, I don't know if we can intellectualize out of things like oh if i do this then they'll do this to do, do, do this thing. not if i do this it's more like okay this is how i feel how do i i didn't feel like this before i'm wondering why what changed you know what changed in me if nothing then maybe i need to change something in me you know mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just trying to get rich or die trying, on honesty. So you go around like, when you rich this shit, you don't worry about nothing. You just go out and buy something. Or buy like, stuff. Drive, I have go get, go in my fucking cart for two weeks. <laughs> go to a beach or some shit. I'm sad. I'm going to a beach. Yeah. I just saw, um, I gotta get off Instagram, but I can't get off Instagram. I would love to delete that shit, though. You should, just for a week. I can. Speaking of which, the last week in June, I'm going to go away. So. So what are you saying? We have to record twice or maybe put that um, other episode that you had. Oh, I'm going to record with um, that guy on Thursday. Maybe I'll use that. We can't say what. He has- <laughs> this podcast episode is somebody else's podcast please do enjoy no we gotta figure that out the last week of June mm-hmm. I have to pee my queen so will you alright I'm done what no we doing? have to put that, that other episode as a bonus episode that's not it's own episode that's not a standalone episode I listened back and was like it's not standalone it's good but it's not I wouldn't want it to be a week episode all right, well, okay, we'll figure that out. Oh, shit, we were supposed to record a ad. What is that? That I is so now. corny. I just have to pee. All right, go pee. We got to record this ad. All right, y'all. Good talk.